All right. So, stream marker up. Starting recording now. Archer tier this time. Uh, and already counted, this week should go by a lot faster than last week. Last week was like 40 plus. This is 32. So, hopefully, I'm not. This isn't going to be another five hours. Uh, I still have to edit or not edit, like put timestamps for sabers. But we were here, like here last week. We're only up to here. Uh, in general, Archer's base kits could be better than the sabers because, like, sabers, they were like super generic at the start. Like, a lot of their decks just looked exactly the same. Uh, hopefully, not as much of a problem. So, same shit. Uh, everyone's supposed to be MP1 because it's not fair. Because, uh, like, some banners, like, you will roll MP5 for a 5-star and never get the 4-star. That is a possibility. Uh I got MP2 Summer Castoria before I got one Summer Chloe. So that's kind of the reason I have to do it like this. It's I, I can't be comparing my MP5 Zenobia to MP1 Jarcher as much as, as much as I have to, because that's what my actual count looks like. Um, but that's not the normal for everyone. All right. So we're gonna start off with Emia. And later in this week, there should be Emia gameplay. Although, based on my own work history, this the video I put out for Emia for farming the Comet Shard should be out. I don't know Wednesday. Who who fucking knows? The, me keeping a schedule. Good luck when I don't have a manager to keep me on my toes. All right, he's first on the list, and let's start. We all know who this is. If you do not know who this servant is, how the fuck did you even get into this series? Like honestly, like if it's not like if it's not Artoria that's a poster child, Emia is the other poster child. It's Emmy it's literally Emia, uh Saber and Gilgamesh. Though like if you ask anyone like about fate, more likely than not they're going to say one of those three. We're servants. I, like, obviously, if we're talking about characters, it's probably going to be Rin or... Uh, <laughs> uh, you're, you're talking about something else from Dojins. Uh, but, all right. So, first archer, or, like, according to this, is the first archer actually released into the game. We know how that is, though. Like, they release a whole block of them. So, just because he's first in the list does not mean he was designed first. For all we know, Gilgamesh could have been the first design servant. Base attack, it's okay for a four-star, 9.3. It's not the worst. It's not, like, super good, but it's still good. It's okay. HP, this is low, and it kind of goes lore accurate because, like, in the Fourth Grail War, he is, like, one of, if not the weakest servant summoned. So it kind of makes sense that his HP would be lower. Star Wars Star Gen are Archer numbers. So 150 is here. This is about 150, and this is about 8%. MP charge 0.51 with triple arts in year one. This was probably pretty dog shit. But you do not use Emia the way he was originally made to. Definitely not how he was originally made. When he originally came out, dog shit. Buster MP with, <laughs> what was it? What was it originally? An arts buff? So you couldn't even buff his MP damage? It was his base card refund? Holy shit. Yeah, they made this They made this character a train wreck when he came out, and then they buffed the shit out of him to the point that he, he can, you can do some fun stuff. Uh, one turn of evasion, 18% defense. Hawkeye skill buff takes a 32% star gen buff, which... Granted, on his Buster MP, like, it actually did affect it. But Hawkeye makes it so when you turn it into an Arts MP, it actually gens a shitload of stars. Like, Caster Gilgamesh level of stars. Without having Gimped Refund. That's the big thing. Not having Gimped Refund like Caster Gilgamesh. He also gets 100% crit damage. Pairs nicely, considering his MP becomes a star bomb. 
this skill has been buffed twice. Uh, that's how you know they really didn't know what they were doing with this character. He didn't really have an identity. And Omni card buff at this current point in time was not good. It helped for like sometimes, but you weren't actually able to farm with him. This skill buff allowing him to switch between arts and buster literally allows him to do farming. When he's in arts mode, all you need is a single, one single Castoria, and then you have, you'll get enough refund to um, loop the wave. You don't need double Castoria. In fact, double Castoria is an actual detriment because you need to reset the cooldown if you want to farm, actually farm with him. His actual comp is double Vich Castoria. Again, weird considering most comps are double Vich Oberon. But if he has a Buster MP and no battery, how the fuck is he going to get his ba MP back for Oberon? So that's kind of why his uh, farming numbers are the way they are. Like, at MP, like, he doesn't have big damage spikes. It's just cool to watch him farm. Uh, but literally using most other units, you're just going to get more damage. Like, Emiya is kind of like a farmer that you use to mess around with. Uh, in, uh, in my other tier list, like, I hyped him up, but, like, I, in practice, like, the only reason he would be hyped up is if he's at higher copies. Uh, using him right now, it is slightly disappointing. Uh, in practicality, like, even MP3. Uh, using it like this. Using it like this, I need to prefer it. Uh, preface debuff resistance, uh, 12.5%, and independent action B crit damage. Uh, mana loading. If you get mana loading, it allows you to uh, pop cast Soria MP, like. First, like you're actually able to like pop it before an MP and you might just get more damage out of it. So it helps his numbers because in this setup, you the only attack buff you get is Castoria's third, uh, 20. So bringing it up to 50% attack. Again, he's a four star, so his damage isn't going to be super amazing, but it's still going to be better than what it is now. And because of the skill buff, you swap between an, uh, 10 hit arts and 10 hit buster in buster mode he is going to drop so many fucking stars you're not gonna have to worry about the turn after all his buffs come off cooldown uh but because you're not you have leeway with this setup to make it so it's not a regular three turn you can kind of turn it into a I want to say like five turn consistent setup. Reason being is you, depending on who you plug suit out, you don't need to pop the buster buffs for bitch. Like turn or like skill order actually kind of matters because you don't, it, like in the video I put out, like you don't, I pop uh, buster buff turn one for them or, or just when I can, but like he's not actually doing buster card damage. So, if, I'm trying to think how to phrase it. He has, a he has a safety nut that normal farming would not normally have. Uh, but unfortunately, he only does have the one buster card to crit. So, that's why it's kind of a safety nut, but not really. Because if, if you don't get the buster card in turns... Three, four, or five, you're kind of screwed. Because on that third turn, he's also not going to get refund. But it's still AoE Buster 10 hit or AoE Arts 10 hit. And it pierces defense. Overcharge effect, very weak. But unfortunately, he got this MP buff super, super early. To the point, I'm not even sure if they would ever actually buff his MP. 
It, like because of uh When you have like units that are just hitting below him anyway, it's like eh. like him Atalanta, like they got such early buffs. It's just I don't know if they'll actually give them an MP buff. Cuz yeah, like they jump up they would jump up to 25 uh K, which is higher than the 5 stars. So if they're already having like damage problems now, it would have to be a skill buff. And are we really gonna give Emiya a fourth skill buff? Like where like Emiya's just in a weird place that he's kind of just gonna have to do this job. And unless we're giving him another like either a fourth skill buff or a second MP upgrade. He's, he's kind of stuck here. And again, I have, I have mine false. They have buffed or yeah, I have mine false. They have given a buff. They have never given a buff. But I have mine true. So I don't, I don't see Emiya getting that much stronger unless it's literally for fate stay night servants. Last year, I put him in EX way too high. I put way too much emphasis on farming. Right now, he can only kind of do farming. Cool setups. If you're, if you're able to do literally any other kind of farming, like, he can at least get you through until you get someone better. Yeah, that's, that's my placement for B. He can get you through until you get a more dedicated uh, AoE arts and or AoE buster that is just going to output more damage. Which, considering he's a year one servant, like day one, a lot of people would have him MP5, which is why it's hard for me to like rank his damage like this on MP1 when it's like, in most cases, you're not going to have only MP1. Uh, yeah, that's him, yeah. Kind of don't want these to go on like tier list, uh, like servant review length, but it, it is going to have to be just to get the point across. Emiya, Emiya is, uh, is a weird one, even like even by any other farming, because he's the only one with this color. He is the only servant on here that is like asking for a weird setup like this. Emia is Emia. And um, yeah. At the very least, he can like he doesn't need uh oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you'd use Castoria just for more early turn damage. You could just do double bitch. Oh, that, okay. Now I actually remember. Now I remember why he was EX last year. It's because he could do, like, he could do this farming and, like, with any Mystic Code. You, like, any, it didn't matter what you had. You just needed a Vich yourself. Okay. Now, yeah. So he is a placeholder until you get someone better. And he give, he can just give you a lot of sand quartz for uh, leveling and ranking him up, but in all practicality, you're not going to use him, just just because you're probably not going to use up Castoria and Vich for farming, like at the same exact time. Like that's what Chen Gong is for. All right, next up, Gilgamesh. Hey yo. Hey, you all. King of Heroes. I still think this guy needs another buff. Even with his first skill, like, it's, and it's only because it's golden rule and it does nothing else. Like, him as a farmer, he doesn't need more damage. 
That's I say he needs a buff, but it's not because he needs more damage. He needs just something else for that second scope. Like we'll get into it in a second. Base attack, good, twelve point two, low ish, but like we're talking about like five hundred attack. It's it's starting. You're starting to pull hairs at that point. Uh, like anything above twelve k is good. HP low for a five star. This is why I want him to get his second skill buff. Give him some survivability because running with Vich, HP is gonna go down anyway. Uh, is weird that he does not have a like in Babylonia. He has shirtless with the hair spiked. I'm surprised they haven't just released that as a costume. But who knows? They might just not want to give costume owning to Gilgamesh Archer. So no Miss Crane's uh, synergy. Star weight, Star Gen, normal Archer numbers. MP charge is unhealthy at 0.34. But that is why Golden Rule exists. And that's where my issue stems from. You made a problem and then you gave it the solution already. If, you, if your game... Balance is like that from the rip. I feel that this skill should be stronger then because you literally made a problem and fixed it. But yeah, point three four. It's a good thing his hit counts are fucking stupid. Like these are this servant literally has the most goaded hit counts of any servant in the fucking game. There is no servant in the entire game that has better hit counts than Gilgamesh across the board. Like, yes, but some servants have like six hit quick cards. Some hit servants have six hit arts cards. But across the board, he has like the most hit counts. And like when they get ramped up, it's it just starts adding up. Yes, Hoyan Skaya of... Darkness or light has a far better arts card. I'm not gonna even I'm not arguing that like his singular arts card is the best. I'm saying across the board his hit counts are gonna be give you the most like bang for your buck uh when you buff them up. Because like Sargent is hit based, uh arts refund if you crit is hit based, and then he has like the MP gain. So when Gilgamesh like when Gilgamesh is critting and doing face card shit, it's you get some of the higher refunds in the game. And just like better performance. First first skill got buffed. 21% he had this from the get-go. But even on even the best charisma in the game, they still buffed. So why is it the worst charismas in the game haven't been buffed yet, right? Power mod against servants with sky attribute and 20 star bomb. This skill brought him out of the meta and put him right back into it. I mean, this skill took him from like, like close to the bottom of the meta and brought him like right to the top for archers. Uh, yeah. At MP1, he has the highest hitting uh, MP for archer AOE archers. With his niche, he hits single target damage. This doesn't even say sky attributes. Sir. Wait. I... I just realized that with this list, it doesn't even say that. This is numbers actually higher? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, MP damage. Got it, got it, got it. It's not power mod. Okay. Right. Um, It's already included. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought this was power mod. No, this is a... If your allies have sky attribute, you get a buff. Just, I just brain farted because I don't get to use Gilgamesh on uh, NA. Like this. And that's where my good Gil that's where I have Gilgamesh on NA. Uh this buff is not out yet. It comes out at the end of this year. Uh but yeah, that's it's why his damage is stupid. And then it's that it's MP damage. This gets double up with Oberon. Gilgamesh is an Oberon farmer. Second skill, again, what I 
what I see both. All I want is three times, three turns in roll. That's it. Give him some survivability. Because the guy literally, his survivability is killing things until they're dead. But that, like, it, Juna and Morgan have that same shit, and they still have guts. The fuck? Third skill got buffed a long time ago, 600%, 30% battery, and all his skills are on five turn instead. Second, you can double stack this, although you shouldn't double stack this because you don't need the 30. But this, you really want to double stack. Eleven percent crit damage from independent action A plus magic resist E debuff resistance ten percent. It's again why I want some survivability because he is not that hard to. He doesn't have that much magic resist. Anti rider because of Skandar, and if you plan on doing farming, get this and then you get a better CE start. NP. 30% MP damage. So in his own kit, he gets when double stack with Oberon, uh 40 170 140% MP damage from his own kit to be doubled with Oberon. And then Oberon's second skill turns that into 200%. Uh and then if you're doing a kind of setup, that's you're just getting even more MP damage. Uh, if you can do black rail, uh, that is monstrous amount and goes up to 360. So yeah, in normal farming, you're probably not black rail using black rail in a challenge quest. You might actually be using black rail and hitting really, really stupid damage numbers. Gilgamesh doesn't need it because he has so much MP damage in his kit, but it's like, there's no kill like overkill if you're using the AAU. And then he gets super effective damage against most servants in the game. This is not a small chunk. This is uh, 831. So it's like less than like seven or eight percent of the servants in the game he doesn't get super effective against. That's still a stupidly small amount, and only two of them are lancers, which he you cannot bring him to fight. He requires all the old mats, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Gilgamesh. Immediately goes into the A plus. Oh, right. I didn't even add the A plus. I did not add this yet. Up. Oh. A plus. Oh. oh, shit. A. And then A plus. All right. Yep. Gilgamesh goes in A plus. He might go up, but he is like definitely like what well, he's one of those buster farmers you can use to uh farm type neutral and have like zero problem. Uh why is this zoomed out so much? Yeah. Three hundred and nine thousand without counting super effective mod. He does almost as much as Altera, which I think is the, the highest hitting uh, 50% start. He will do 50% more than Altera. But you wouldn't bring him to farm Lancers anyway, so that's a non-issue. Uh, just scrolling through here real quick just to see the 50%. So I think Melison gets higher, but Melison is broken, so that's not fair. Uh, yeah, have, like having like it's basically comparing him to berserkers. It ba like basically have to compare him to berserkers for how high his damage actually will hit. All 
All right, next, Atalanta. Here, all right. Uh, also make sure music. Oh, uh, I'm gonna put music on shuffle like now, so I don't forget it. So you guys aren't playing, uh, listening to the. Same album. All right, Atalanta. This is the first servant I got in the game that was MP5. This is the first servant I used for farming. This is the first servant I got bond 10. But I'm not going to be biased on this. I still, like, this one definitely needs a buff. This servant definitely needs a buff. Because she just does not hit hard. Or it's not... No, no, it's not the hitting hard. It's not the sergeant. It's she just like it's part of it is this. Is it, yeah, it it is her refund. She is just she is just she has some of the stuff for a modern farming servant. It's just not good anymore. Like one turn quick buff. For the party at 50% good, but kind of have to save that for wave three if you want big damage. And yeah, you have to you have to be able to refund first. And granted, like she has a super high MP, like it, refund isn't her biggest concern, but it is for a modern servant. This is a lit, this is pretty concerning. Her second skill is only star weight. So this is where I would buff it. Like, I don't know. War turns is iffy. I don't know if they can, like, put a 30 battery on this. And even then, it's not fixing the whole issue. But I don't see them putting a card buff on here either. It's like... I, like, I don't expect them to give her, like, a three-turn card buff. Like, maybe a battery, and that's about it. Evasion for one turn, and MP gen, 50%. This is, if she didn't have this, she wouldn't be farming. So it's a good thing she had this from the get-go. Uh, Madras SD, 12.5, independent action A, 10% crit. And she makes so many stars. Uh, Anti-Berserker, very nice for a refund if she needs to do it. Start it, like, if you have Neurobride, this is, like, you can probably easy, easily do Black Rare Looping. Uh, hang on. No, no, no. Because I think you did. No, no. I don't. Mm. I would need, need to double check the video I did, but I'm pretty sure it was not Black Rail. Hmm. I I really feel that I did do black rail looping with her. So I I I need I need the proof chat. Cuz especially if it's not on that list, it's kind it can kind of be suspect. The greatest adventures begin with the unknown. Uh, All right, so I did super scope. Okay, Super Soap 2004. If I'm using Oberon, there's no... Yeah, okay, so I... Yeah, you are able to black the loop. Uh, mm, <laughs> but you might need this for the refund. And I'm pretty... Yeah... So, like, it like if you're able to black rail loop damage, that isn't the issue anymore. Um, okay, so black rail loop with Castoria, 
You knew with Oberon. I know. So I never tried with Nero. Um. But with the card buff, she's able to loop 100%. So that, that's where the issue lies. Uh, but this team, she actually has too much charge. So let's go over on one. I'm glad I have this. I, I'm glad I have this for proof. Yeah, she she's not able to do it neutral. Uh, that's the issue. It has to be against Sabres where she's getting overkill, or it has to be against Riders or Casters where she'd be getting better refund anyway. So I do, yeah, I, I think she needs a battery. And that that's really it. She's able to farm how she is, but she does need a bit of a, she needs a little help because she just doesn't, it's, she she's being forced to loop like an arts looper for Black Rail. She is being forced to loop like an arts looper where she does not have forgiveness. Uh like turn three, like she doesn't. Yeah, th there's just so much room for error. Ten hit is what allows her to do the farming. Star bomb, this doesn't need to be here. This could have literally been anything. But yeah, this character, she, the fact that she still works effectively is good, but not modern. Um, yeah, it it is literally just MP spam, and that's it. Close that out. All right, next. Orion. Oof. Oof. So, mm, people do not have good things to say about this character. And it is for a very good reason. 1% MP charge, but the probably the worst hit counts for any SSR in the entire game. One hit arts cards on an art servant. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, were they that afraid of the MP refund? It feels like they were that afraid of the MP refund, but the MP refund wasn't isn't even that good. Single target, it's not AoE. High attack or low attack, actually. This is below average. And higher HP. Again, it's not 15k, but it's still high. Um Again, this is a huge issue with the hit counts. Like, I think Ar Artemis is one of those servants that actually does need a hit count up upgrade. I know I did like a tier list for it last year over the summer, but that was more for shits and giggles, and I was not sober during that. Like, this is me being sober, and I'm like, she needs a hit count upgrade. She needs it. Like, out of almost all the servants that need animation up upgrades, this is definitely one of them because it hinders her performance so much like she just has so much problems getting back to her mp without getting uh batteries because like we're in the battery meta where like you're it's esports new servants are coming in buffing dropping their buffs dying blah 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 it doesn't help that if your account isn't strong enough to do that you're going to be struggling with this character Heavily struggling with this character. Doesn't matter that the art is good. Fucking Orion. First skill. Uh, fifty percent defense for one turn, twenty percent attack for three turns, and evil resistance for three turns. 
These are all static. You are only leveling the skill for defense and the cooldown, which I mean, for like Tomomo, like, I mean, I get it. Tomomo was out, I believe, when this character has come out, when this character came out. So, like, the cooldown reduction, like, you would have had like pretty decent uptime on all this stuff. But not, again, not enough. Not enough. This skill. I, I don't know if I would buff this skill first. Now, this one. Oh, fuck no. No, no, no. You buff this and make this three turns. You buff this and make this three turns. I don't fucking care if it's OP. This character fucking needs it. This character needs that power mod. If she's going to have this niche, fucking needs it. Also, by the way, if you bring Orion to fight Orion, you're going to get super effective because this counts as a male servant. It, like, Artemis hijacked it, but it th he's considered the servant. They both take the damage. Fun fact. Third skill, I am mind false. This There is a potential for this being buffed. The issue with Artemis having this skill is that she is an art servant that does not... She's an art servant. She's not genning stars, so these this crit damage probably has never been a factor for a lot of people. Low magic resist at 12.5%. Independent action A plus at 11. So this is like when the skill's up, 45% crit damage. But again, you're not going to be able to take advantage of it. 20%. She doesn't have a battery. It just makes starting easier. And anti-archer. Funny, she... Power upon on the skill, and then more damage against her uh, against herself. I like at this point, I realize this is supposed to be actual Orion. I just think it, I just can't help but point out how funny it is. NP, I like I like the idea of this MP. It's just like the rest of the kit suffers so much. Five hit single target damage to one enemy reduces their attack with twenty percent. And drain. As long as you can loot this MP, you can do such good suppressing fire to the point that even if the MP attacks you, it's not gonna do damage. And then when like and they're just never gonna MP. The issue is looping the MP. It should not be the struggle bus like this. All she really has for refund is load her up with batteries and like hopefully get enough refund for the batteries to work right and not just waste 50% on 4% left. But that is more for other buffers, not really Castoria. Also doesn't help. She's single target arts, which is, uh, yeah, not, not good. Single target arts servants not not looking too good. Like not only is her dead, like and just just a reminder, just a reminder, this is a servant with an MP upgrade. This is a servant with an MP upgrade, and she's hitting lower than four stars. Granted, they have MP upgrades too. But this one doesn't. You out damage by 5,000 by a character that doesn't have an MP upgrade. You're at the bottom of servants that have MP upgrades. Like, Artemis needs, like... At the, she needs a car buff for three turns, like 30% arts. And then, like, yeah, actually... If you're not going to make this a power mod, just give her 30% arts. Or like make it one turn of 100 and then three turns of uh, 50%. And then a card buff. That I think will actually like fix her considerably. Uh, like Lee Shuen, how he has the 50% attack buff and then after that turn it drops down to 20. Uh, Artemis kind of needs that same buffing. Because just... She shouldn't be this out damaged by four stars at MP1.
it, it guess anti mail cool but that again that's only one turn uh after that one turn she's gonna fall off and like literally any other single target archer or or because remember fighting sabers single target saber enemies mhx and musashi like even this anti-male going up against like comparing to musashi musashi has it every turn so i i think we're at the point where we have to start doing some crazy stuff for some of these single targets if an aoe farmer is actually like competing in niche next up tesla Dr. Raiden. This man got a hell of a glow up uh, from all the buffs he got. He is definitely in... I would definitely say he's in the ballpark, but I do have some issues with some of his kit. Uh, mainly, it's the hit count. Uh, Gilgamesh without Golden Rule. Yeah. Gain's not the best, but at least he does have like decent hit counts. And like just good base stats. This character, if you don't have buffs, it's you're going to be struggling to get back to MP. Uh yeah. Eleven point seven uh attack, thirteen point eight K HP. That's good. Above average here. L a little concerning here, but he he does have a guts now. It counts. They are good. They are worth more than what Gilgamesh has. Like Gilgamesh is gonna be my bar uh for these AoE busters. Uh just because he's like the first. Even though he's like he shouldn't be the bar, but I kinda have to be he kinda has to be the bar. But hit counts, I if they buff his hit counts, I don't think he needs a buff after that. I think his only flaw right now for me personally is the hit counts. First skill has been du double buffed, 50% MP gen for himself. So this is what Gilgamesh has. It makes up for these hit counts being like so low. It truly does considering Gilgamesh, uh, the ways his works, it's 50% uh, on 1.1 effective and this is 50% on 1.1 nine so tesla goes zero to 100 a whole lot easier than gilgamesh but tesla is going to be reliant on supports more than anything for uh everything outside of refund and a challenge quest yeah like outside of like normal three turn farming tesla might have problems like doing decent crit damage like there's nothing wrong with being an mp spanner oh shit my mic just fell uh gotta adjust it there's nothing wrong with being an mp spammer but in challenge quests like if you're banking on that and you're not it's not going to end in three turns with oberon there is some survivability concerns uh 50 percent. yeah we already talked about that uh, debuff success rate though this is pretty big for himself everyone else in the party gets a 30 percent uh gen so this is why he would be better in challenge quest though than gilgamesh because he actually helps contribute to the spam and party uh buff success rate up 20 percent hell of a change one hell of a change Second skill, 20%, uh, or now because of this buff, these are guaranteed. So 30% defense, 30% MP damage, 20% attack, and a uh, guts one time three turns at 3k. 50% uh, battery, ignores invincibility, and 10 stars per turn. Tesla, I will say, is more likely to be a black rail looper. But, uh, again, I don't 
it's not normal farming. And in order to do black rail looping, it requires a lot more cost investment to the point it's, do you need, are, like, is our whole farm going to be black rail looping? Because in that case, you're giving up a lot of party cost uh, and, like, just farming potential for, like, bond points and everything because you have to run double vitch over on Summer Chloe and Black Rail. So that party cost is probably up in the 80s at that point. What's up, Goomba? Like, effective damage, it's just, like, do you need, like, do we even have nodes that warrant it, like, that high? Debuff res 15%, uh, percent. independent action B, 8%. Anti-caster, good for farming. Uh, black rail, you're going to need this. MP, damage to all enemies. Stun, chance to stun all enemies for uh, 40%. Uh, matches up with Kashin Koji. Damage to self. And then super effective damage against earth or sky attribute enemies. Uh, servants, servants. So his damage max up matches up with Gilgamesh. It is this is Gilgamesh with uh different stuff. Like they are comparable. So right now he automatically goes to a plus, and we will talk about this later. Going to a barbecue later. Uh this is Tesla. Yeah, uh, damage numbers, like guy, guy is literally comparable to Google Mesh. Yeah, Yoga Mesh. Uh, if you have one of them, you kind of don't need the other. Uh, Gilgamesh just with his recent buff just has like more consistent and universal damage, while Tesla is like <laughs> Tesla is not doing. You have to bring Earth or Sky, but it. But Earth or Sky Servants is very common. They're both servant mods, so like that isn't an argument whether you're neutral farming against non-servants. They be they both don't get their power mod. It has to be servants. Gilgamesh is just more servants than Tesla. Oof. Next up, Arjuna. Oh, unfortunate this one he is in a category of monsters and they fucked up his kit and they've already buffed it up to the point that it's going to be a little concerning what they do to it if they decide to buff again ah. and mark it here all right so arjuna Good base attack, 12.3k. And HP, a little low, but I'm pretty sure he has like healing and a whole bunch of other stuff to make it so he does not take nearly as much damage as he possibly could. He is definitely a servant that you'd be using in longer challenge quests and non-standard ones. You're not doing normal buster farming for him. Uh, even in normal farming... You're not doing the normal setups. You're doing some weird... It's not Emmy a weird shit, but it is... You're doing some weird shit. Sure. And it's funny, because Triple Arts, like Emmy, same... Uh, I don't think it's same hit count, but same base MP gain. So, yeah, it's like... Uh, is it just Emmy with better hit counts? Yeah, uh, yeah, better, better hit counts, but not by that much. So the gains are like extremely similar. Gains are extremely similar. Just Emiya is more likely to. I was gonna say Emiya more likely to crit, but Arjuna can do it too. He gets the Star Gen buff, fifty percent. So not Hawkeye, but this is the. This is so ridiculously stupid for challenge quests the guy has debuff immunity for five turns on a six turn cooldown there's literally one turn one turn where he does not have debuff immunity one singular turn if you have any kind of cooldown reduction 
Like you use him with Tomo for whatever reason. This is a hundred percent up time. He would have to get his all his buffs removed for him to even get debuffed. It really sucks that challenge quests are not stally these days. Because this is like I find this just super, super valuable. Second skill is annoying performing because it's a 25% battery on a 10 turn cooldown. And they had to bring this down because it originally was a it originally was 10 and they brought it down to eight. You cannot double stack this no matter what you do. You actually no, you can, but you need Atlas, so you cannot plug suit. You would have to use double vich and atlas mystic code to get this off cooldown again so not practical in any sense of the way for normal farming challenge quest different story because heal per turn stars per turn gauge per turn this has no this one slight value in farming no value in farming whatsoever guy is not supposed to be a farmer just because he's aoe doesn't mean you should be farming with him uh, also farming chains, spirit roots. Uh, yeah, I need the comet shards because they're definitely not showing up in the lotto, but I'll farm other stuff later. Third skill. Uh, again, cannot be double stacked with Vich. 30% buster, 20% MB damage. Now, Karna has something similar, but the issue with Arjuna having this is, and then making this three turns, is that it's strictly for the MP. The guy only has one buster card. That, that's... I doubt they would buff this and give him an Omni. I highly doubt it. But, I mean... It's because this is Mana Burst Flame, but, like, it, honestly, the best solution for him would be, like, make this all three-turn and make this uh, Omni card buff. Like I, w I wish I was joking, but like I even making any of all of this three turns, I'm I don't think it's gonna fix his shit. I don't think trying to make Arjuna be a farmer is the way they need to buff this guy, because he does he still needs buffs, but I don't I don't think making him a farmer is gonna be what they should do because AOE Buster Archers is a category of monsters for farming. We all know it. Ishtar, Gilgamesh, Tesla. Uh, who else is there now? Who else is here now? Napoleon, Tomei Tomo. And Arash. Arash. Arash out damages these guys with Summer Chloe. That is hilarious. But you need so much uh, supports. Um... Yeah, like you have all these options. Are we really going to make another servant like fall into this bracket when he's permanent, Arjuna is permanent, you're story locked, you're limited, you're limited, you're especially limited. Like it's it's not how they should go about buffing him. I I think making him just a better challenge quest unit is just how they need to keep it. No guts, but it's whatever. Anti Berserker, nice. Mana loading, 20. His MP is also just such. Oh my God. I, I don't know why they didn't give him anti divine. His insta kill on divine enemies is not going to fucking happen. Most of them are servants. So you're. And I gag. I laugh. I gag about Kiara insta killing during a challenge quest. That's Kiara. She's going to break anyway. Like this is this is not Kiara. She's not gonna get at least in a challenge quest, Kiara will get refund because just because they're they got in skill doesn't mean they're they don't still exist on the field. They're still gonna take damage and get refund. Um this he gets no refund. They're just dead. If it even happens, it's not going to happen because this is two chances. 
This is two chances. Not, they don't add up. It's two separate procs. The defense down, again, this doesn't apply in farming. You're going to get nothing out of this. Trying to fart, force Arjuna to be a farmer, not going to work. So he's not going to be ranked as a farmer. I think he's just okay. Because we're, all, we're also in the state where he's okay, but you don't need what he has. And it's clunky. It is very clunky. If he had anti-servant or anti-divine as somewhere in his kit, different story, but I don't think they're going to do that. And he, like, if you need to farm with him, he can. I believe he can do double Oberon. So it's not that he can't do farming. It's just he's not good. At, he's not going to be the, like that good at it. All right. Next, we have Tristan. OG Tristan this time. Uh. Can I think of anything funny to say? No, nothing that hasn't already been said by Morgan. Yeah, nothing that hasn't been said by Morgan already. Uh, 9.7k attack. 11.68 HP. Little low, but not by that much. 0.58 and normal Stargent. Uh, yeah, 0.58%. This is actually pretty good for his hit counts. Uh, his quick cards will refund fairly well. He can do mighty chains. His extra attack is pretty good, but held back by the fact that he's an archer. So it's not going to gen that much stars, but in a mighty chain, he's leading with a quick card anyway. So you, it's not that he's not going to gen no stars. It's just not going to be a lot of stars. But again, in a quick chain, obviously he will gen a lot of stars. Yeah, I, like I'm very happy with this hit count considering his time, like when he came out, because this is like actually like really good. Like the ramp up for his servants getting better for archers is so much better than sabers. Sabers has so many bad. They made they just made so many ser so many saber servants, and not a lot of them are that good. They made a lot of mediocre servants sabers. Or. <sighs> Originally, they made it originally mediocre. Fucking Rama. Rip Bozo. Still taking shots at him even when he's not even on this tier list. Unfortunate. All right. So Tristan, he did not have a card buff when he came out. Now he has a card buff of 30%. But he only got this because of Sith. He only got this because the new uh, five uh, four star Tristan uh, was just going to like shit on him if he didn't get this buff. It was mental debuffs. They turn it into a full party cleanse. Harp of Healing is known for giving the dodge with no cooldown and a thousand heal for the party. Yeah, Tristan, not bad. He's not a bad. And then Sith is Sith. I see more value in OG Sith, but we'll get to that later. Second skill. 50% battery, but MP seal, but because this is a full party cleanse, pop this first and then this. Otherwise, you are otherwise he might not he might as well not have gotten a buff. Like, I don't think they're ever gonna get rid of this simply because they put they fixed the problem. Simply because they fixed the problem. If they buff this skill, they're not gonna get rid of this and they're just gonna add another effect. I'm calling it if it ever happens. And third skill, full bus strip and reduce their crit attack chance. Five turn cooldown. I think this is solid for any challenge quest servant to be able to yeet off buffs. Because some of them might be super annoying and might one shot you if you give them a chance. This can also move guts because it is not strictly defensive buffs. Yeah, no, uh, Tristan, Barrios, those are very high grail candidates, especially on NA, where I have them like MP10, 
uh, and any bonding I do is pretty much like coins for them, uh, strictly for uh, 120 or one like going to 120. Uh, eventually they probably will get hit uh, 120, but I just got to be in a lotto. Everything else has to be co uh I was about to say kosher. Uh, everything else has to be good. Damn, I haven't I haven't said everything has to be kosher in a while. I'm not even Jewish. Uh, like that's just something. Oh, because I grew up. Yeah, because a lot of the people, um, people I grew up around were Jewish. That's why. So weird, like what you like, you leave and then you come back and then you don't realize what you're actually what, what you do and didn't say based on how you grew up. Uh, anyway, anti caster. Merlin. No, uh, Merlin probably fucked with his. Uh, Merlin trolled his ass probably a couple times. So that actually makes sense. Like, no, I'm like ninety percent sure Merlin actually would have put him in illusion, like where he was flirting with someone and it like, and he thought it was his wife and it wasn't. J like as a favor to Lancelot. So that other people will be talking shit about him like that. Fucking, fucking cock wizard. That's a, that's another thing that would um make a good anime. Like Merlin just fucking with people in Caldea, and then uh Anderson fucking roasting people in Caldea. All right, uh, MP. Defense pierce and ignore evasion. With the buff strip, like m most of the time, like unless he's dealing with invo, like buff, no buff should really stop him. And if you're bringing him to invo, like at that point, you should just use a different unit that like doesn't have invo pierce and then give him an invo pierce CE. Cause like, <laughs> it's like you have ignore evasion, you have defense pierce. And then, like, you're better off just giving a different unit that has Invo Pierce, like, Defense Pierce. And then, instead of giving this guy, like, Invo Pierce 2, because that's, it's overkill. Seven hit single target is nice, though. And debuff res down 30% for three turns. MP is fairly spammable. Like, with this 50 battery, it's fairly spammable. So you can, like, actually get this down, like, really low. Like, it is, it starts to not be an issue landing stuff. So, for enemies that have, like, magic resist, like, high amounts of it, not a bad try to just nuke or just spam. Uh, catch up for chat. Uh, I think my bomb is just... Cigar 100. I mean, that's your choice. I, I don't think it's a good choice, but it's your choice. Uh, Sigurd, it like Sigurd is a good person. Is is I just don't like his gameplay right now, like and but that could always change. Draco later on. Uh, do you think? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Uh, Lady Avalon. She. <sighs> In a second, uh, I just want to place Tristan real quick. All right, so Tristan. Hey, I think I think he's solid. I think I think with that MP buff, the MP buff plus, um, the skill buff, like it fixed his problem, and just getting extra copies is nice, but. Uh, I'm all, like I'm always gonna say these single target archers need a damage buff. For like all of them, th all these single targets, they need a damage buff. Their their base damage should be like around here. Like this shouldn't be an exception. This should be like their base damage. Like all like all of them need to go up an MP copy. Just just because of how the meta's changed. So, like, if he gets something that ups his damage, cool. Uh, 
probably would be on third skill, but I don't know how they're going to do that. Like, especially because, like, I feel that for Archer specifically, they're a, the game balance is relying too heavily on them critting. It's too heavy on face card damage. And then it turns, like, even the art servants into having to worry about, like, uh, like crit damage, like, quick servants. Instead of, like, actually having the MP damage to compare to, like, other competition. Like, it's not fair. MHX is not fair. Musashi is not fair. It's not fair for them. Yeah. No, we got to keep moving. King of the beach. Squirt Toria. From one night to another. Except this one is uh, getting praises from. <laughs> oh. Wait. Wait, 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 wait a second. Okay, so I'm remembering the Carnival Phantasm intro. It is the three nights. Wait. This is, okay, this is going back to last week. Hold up. Grand Carnival intro. All right, I'm, this is still muted. Hold up. This is what's weird. I brought this up last week. Yeah. This is your, that, that is your aunt. That is your aunt that you're doing this shit with. Why? It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> I'm just saying, because last week it was Gawain, and which Artoria does he prefer? And last week I said, oh, they're family, but like obviously he's learning too much from his mother. Obviously, Gawain is uh, taking after his mother too much. All right. 11.2k uh, attack, 14.5k HP. Very chunky HP for an archer. 0.59% gain. Uh, and hit counts, they are good. They're not amazing, but they're good average in the modern setting. 0.59 is the refund she kind of needs because this uh, server goes 0 to 100. Like, real, like, it really spams the MP. Like, this is what Artemis wants to do, except better. I remember way back when I used this uh, support Scatoria for the last uh, Gatia fight. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I was... Uh, I, don't, I don't remember me how I played at the start of the game. I was a fucking noob. Can't even remember that shit. All right. Uh, first skill got buffed. 30% arts buff. 30% battery. Ignores evasion. 20% defense for the party. She did not need this skill buffed. She really didn't. It just made her better and let her start with Black Rail even easier. This is likely to get buffed because Shiki got this skill buffed. And. If you have, um, okay, so first off, the battery lets her use this heal off turn one, but if, and if you have mana loading, you can use this on turn one, but why would you? Because you're already at full HP. Uh, if you want, if you want to actively use this though, you need to have MP2. Otherwise this will take away from your actual MP. Or you have to use a skill to give them another battery. So, 
I do think they're going to eventually buff this and make it targeted, but because this is a Southern Servant, it's probably not happening for a couple years. Third skill is probably going to get buffed because it's a Charisma that only buffed male allies, and in most... Yeah, no, in arts setups, this doesn't even matter because you're running... Lady Avalon, Castoria, uh, Reigns, Tomamo, Popus Johanna. Need I go on on how many of those servants are actually male and how many of them aren't? So this has no place in like who her supports would actually be. Like I get it, this is summer servant buff, but there's a reason they don't do this. And also Sargent is like a non-stat. I see this getting buffed in the future. 20% debuff res, independent action A, uh, A for crit damage, and nice arts buff, consistent 40. Beach flower. Um, I, I guess that opening for Carnival Grand Carnival was beach flower. That was the skill. That's why they were praising her like that. That was beach flower in action. It even reduces her own nephew to a simp. Unfortunate. 20% battery makes it easier for her to start with black rail. And anti-rider for Mordred. She needs to give her son a spanking. 10 hit single target arts MP, 70% 70 chance, 70 chance to drain, and 20% battery. Yeah, if you do not have her MP2, like a lot of her kit just doesn't function as well as it possibly could. But she is the epitome of MP spam. There is no contest about it. She is literally the poster child for Black Rail MP spam and do not fucking worry about it. If she was any other card type, this might be like a slight issue, but seeing as she's arts, like I, uh, she, she's literally playing the card type to the best, to the utmost of its ability. Damn is this shit. But I mean, when you're using Black Rail like this, like there is literally no reason not to be running a uh, Black Rail on Summer Cast on uh, Summer Saber. Uh and now let's bust out this sheet. Yeah. 830,000 without niche. Easy black rail spam. I mean, an ultra can do it, but if you do any kind of face guarding, it screws it up. Artoria, she's, you do it and go. You do it and go. And like even other niches, like just don't compare. She is the most consistent uh, single target arts farmer in the game. Emia, the, Emia just gets more damage, but because of the way his cards buffs, if you if he does not kill, if he has any damage problems in these first two waves, he's gonna fall off because uh, card buffs is it like especially an arts card buff would greatly fuck up his damage. So she is sitting safe at A+. Plus. Possibly EX. Kind of want to go through this a little more. But more, more likely than not, she is going into EX. Arts is best. Uh, uh, you said it, not me. You said it, not me. 
Oh shit! No, wait. No, the China isn't up. You people can't even say who said that. Fuck. Damn it. Yeah, no, I'm not putting a chat up today. Not, not this one. All right. So I guess technically I did say that. Fuck me. Oh, all right. And Bonnie married. Yeah, fucking bait the streamer. Okay. Okay. And Bonnie Mary Reed, pan pirates that don't give a fuck about whether the master is uh, male or female. They're still going to sexually harass you and plunder your booty. Again, it doesn't matter what gender you are. They're still going to plunder that booty. 9.4K attack, 11.5K HP. And also, she is voiced by Saber. I think it's this one. Is voiced by Saber. Or uh, Kawasumi Ayako. Uh, star weight, star gen, archer numbers, MP charge, 0.585. But worse hit counts. These are, uh, you kind of need to crit. Again, goes back to the issue of archers being uh, balanced around them critting over them not critting. And... Uh, I'm 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 not the biggest on their design, like bunny girl outfit, but they don't have the bunny girl trait, right? It's real. It's really really funny that they have bunny ears. They don't count as bunny servant, but they do count as summer servant. I feel like they need to go back and look at some of the traits servants have. Okay, a better version of beach flower, so slightly higher attack, but. And crit star gen, but not by and enough to an amount to actually matter. Star weight, 30% battery, 15 stars. I mean, it's, it's always nice to have this. 30 uh 25.5% attack buff for three turns. Guts one time, no duration. And de but debuff resistance down 50% for three turns. If you're dealing with anyone that has a debuff, you do not bring this character. You are going to get fucked so hard. You're going to get the guts proc, and then you're also going to get stunned. And then you're going to be sad. Debuff resistance 12.5%. Crit damage 10%. And... Yes, because she got a 30 battery. This is Blackbeard. This is Blackbeard. She does the low damage shit. It's good that she has the guts. She always had the guts. Uh, lower her HP gets, the more damage she does, which is, again, why this is one HP. Second at procs, you better fucking hope you didn't get stunned. You better hope you did not get CC'd, otherwise you're going to die next turn. Uh, sucks that this is before damage, because she would really, really want it, especially because uh, getting back to her MP might be an issue. but. Because this is on a six turn, it's not that much of an issue. The, like, the issue really is going to be when does this gut sprock and is it going to fuck you over because it procs? Because, again, if you have dots, you're, you're really screwed. Yeah, CC and dots, you are going to get fucked so hard using the servant. Uh, and that's kind of it. Like, the low HP is, like, just on this skill alone. And she doesn't do anything else about it. So that's a red flag, because even her normal version, like, the normal version of this servant also does the same low HP shit. They both do it. But this one, like, caters more to it, like, and even gets herself a ton. And the extra damage is on the overcharge, so you can get it even higher. It's like, this one is half-assing it. And it's just a little more frustrating because of it. Oh, no, 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 okay. Um... Yeah, okay, no, no, no. Sorry, let me rephrase it. Um... Oh, no, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 um, the other one, like, Ryder can scale up 
get the scaling up higher. Yeah, let me bring this back up. Yes, yes, okay. So this one gets this uh, multiplier up way higher. Like it scales with overcharge. So the lower your HP and the higher your overcharge, the more damage you do. This one is completely static. And granted, 600% is a lot for Buster, but it's not that much. It's not that much. Uh, the extra defense down is nice because this doesn't have a normal effect, but again, it's after damage. Um, yeah, this, this servant feels half-assed, which is like sum up. Yeah, no, sum up every year one summer servant in a nutshell. Besides, besides uh, Mordred and Squirtoria at release. No, even Mordred, even Mordred, her MP game was lower than it was supposed to, and they literally doubled it. Like, Squirtoria is literally the only Summer Servant in year one that did not come out half-assed. She can still do her job. If she didn't have the guts, I, like, I would actually rank her um like d but she at least has the guts to make it work like she's not abysmal and because she's buster you can kind of like fuck around with it but at the same time because she's buster and without the taunt bitch is just as likely to die as she is like, unless you're fighting AoE, bitch is probably going to get, like, focus fired. Like, literally the same chance as this one. Because unlike Honkai, like, classes don't have, like, aggro value, too. I, I kind of actually would be scared in this game if, like, Berserkers had aggro. Because then, A, they would spam their MPs more, but they'd also die even faster. So, like, Herc who like has his dodge uh i don't know like I, i'm i, I am kind of glad this game doesn't have taunt aggro because it, it would make things a lot more annoying like that that by itself would be a meta shift but it's not going to be a meta shift people like all right next up Ishtar. I have been saying that this servant needs to be able to black rail loop from the get-go. Like she like she needs a buff that lets her black rail loop. Because at this point, like you cannot just keep having Gilgamesh and Ishtar keep one up in each other like this. Ishtar needs a different way to get more damage than just. Give her, buff her charisma, which I still think needs to be buffed. I, when this is power crap by other servants, like on the values, I know this is five turns, but like the crit damage is too low. It, it's really the crit damage. Like, yeah, it's party, but it's still her crit damage. Get Like, let her get a crit another crit damage buff on this skill, and then I can stop talking shit about it. But for uh, her as a farmer, they need to buff this skill and give her a 10% battery like uh, Tiamat. And since they're like from the similar mythology, like, yeah, yeah, give her Tiamat treatment on that. So this is the, I can't say this is the worst Rin because the worst Rin is uh, Summer Ishtar, the one that fucking tried to summon up Googaluna, Googalana for shits and giggles to assert her dominance and failed miserably. Like, what, couldn't she not control it? Like, uh, Summer Ishtar is literally girl failure Rin, like, epitomized. This one is still girl failure Rin, but more, even more Cinderay. 12.2 uh, attack, 12.2k attack, 13, almost 14k HP, star weight, star gen, uh, she has really good hit counts, but this extra attack is going to suffer because A, Archer, B, low gain here. Uh, much like, and unlike 
Gilgamesh, she doesn't have like golden rule. Like specifically in the lore, she will never have golden rule. So this is not gonna go up any easier. It counts are nice though, for mighty chain purposes. Yeah, like the these four and four here for mighty chain actually is really nice. So like the mighty brave chain won't look too bad, but in general, this is not gonna gen HP uh MP and it's not gonna gen much stars. But that's where other stuff in her kit comes into play. So set it. Even if this is party wide, I still think this needs to be she needs to have her own crit damage on here. 50% battery. This is infuriating because if you need the invul, you're not gonna get you're getting the invul pierce. And when you need both, when you need the ignore invincibility, you're not going to get either. Battery is static, but this is this as it is is infuriating for to deal with when you actually need it. Like just tying these two together, fucking sucks. You don't tie like it sucks tying damage to uh, a battery, and it, but not nearly as bad as this. It like survivability and a card buff horrible together unless the survivability is uh three turns battery and uh survivability sucks because you're gonna need one or the other and then this skill it is unstackable all ishtar needs is uh 10 percent. she just needs 10 percent popping this skill and she can black real loop let her give her the t amount treatment at this point then, then her and Gilgamesh are two completely different units. They will be buffed differently. You use them differently, but they still do like really good damage. Twenty percent debuff resistance, and and also the lore accurate stuff because Vryn has to deal with the Black Rail. Make it lore accurate. Just saying. 10% crit damage and then goddess essence so she has 42.5% debuff resistance so a uh, rin servants you got you got to really get up there to like do any kind of dot stuff we're not dot but just involving debuffs at all like arjuna alter you cannot like bring him to fight any rin bosses is not going to be a fun time because it is it is going to be a crapshoot whether you actually land or not Anti ruler, this is useless. Useless. Do not level this no matter what. This MP is pretty sick. 20 star bomb ups her buster performance up no matter what. So even though she doesn't have a buster butt in her kit, she is getting buffed. Every no ramp up, but it's when she needs it. And 20 stars is just nice for any buster unit. At current moment, she is not in the same conversation as Gilgamesh or Tesla. It is just, it is how it is. She's solid in A. Uh, I've used her at MP1. She, I've used her for 90 plus. plus. It's, it's, there's a distinct lack in damage. There's just a distinct lack in damage. But again, Black Rail would solve a lot of it. Okay, we're at 10. Good. Not forgetting anyone. Me. The useless. Yes, indeed. Useless goddess. Useless goddess. If I could for the tier list, I would give her the aqua face. I don't even remember if that's canon. Like, she actually, they actually put her in Babylonia with the aqua face for useless goddess. I can't, I can't, I actually can't remember which came first, Kanasuba or uh, Babylonia anime. I'm pretty sure it was Kanasuba. But yeah, Ishtar is useless goddess, and Summer Ishtar is definitely useless goddess. All right, Moriarty. We have the character that has one of the sickest 
costumes in the entire fucking game. Like, straight up, he looks like a different fucking character. He looks like a completely different character with this costume. Like, this is, like, I I would definitely put, like, same with Kintoki's costume. Like, Raida costumes are, like, they're truly, like, peak design for this game. Like Rida, say whatever you say whatever you want about Rida. They can draw characters and make them look really nice. They draw characters and make them look really nice. For all sides of the spectrum, Rida has artwork for you. Most sides of the spectrum, most sides. I I don't know. I'm not gonna claim Rida's. I'm not going to claim anything they've done. I, I don't know all their work. Don't cancel me. Don't cancel me, please. Uh, MP charge, 0.38%. Uh, concerning, but uh, look at this. these hit counts. Back up here, 11.7K attack. This is good, higher than average, but not amazing. HP, low, but old man, he's going to break his back if he tries too hard. And uh, Fran just might walk over him instead of helping him. Yeah, we can't we can't let this old man just break his back on Caldea floors. Someone's gonna have to pay for it. It counts good across the board, um, but not amazing because of this low number. Every everything is gonna be suspect uh, to him needing to print on these cards. Like by themselves, three hit, four hit arts at this number isn't good, but because he has three of them and can do triple art, uh, like arts chains, it's better. First skill ignores invincibility for one turn, ignores defense for one turn, star weight for a turn, 600%. For an archer, this is a lot, and stars, 20 stars. He needs this part more than anything. He needed this. So much. Second skill. If there are 10 stars on the field, 50% battery, MP damage, 20% for three turns, and gives the entire party the evil alignment. If you do not have stars, you could not pop this skill. It was super important they gave him this. This is why, like, they try Before Cuckoo, they tried. They tried doing servants that cost stars. Uh, Sami Ramis and Moriarty are the examples. And what they learned is that people don't fucking like it. They don't like it when you uh, create a problem and don't give a way to actually solve it because they got this buff before Vich came out. The answer to a, a problem in your kit should not be by another unit. It's one thing for farming. It's a, a completely different thing when your actual kit is you like and bringing a star bomb CE is not an answer because that only works for one turn. Yeah, but you have to plug suit in. You have to you have to give up party costs for Mozart just to use a skill. For a skill, you have to uh, give up a slot. Like, they didn't need to give him 20. They could have just given him 10. And, like, it would have been fine, but 20 is the standard for Star Bombs now. This part is needed for setups that have to deal with niches. Like, you buff evil. Uh, you can give this to servants that normally would not get buffed. Like, you turn Gilgamesh into chaotic evil. And then suddenly Gilgamesh ha now has access to Doman. And all the buff, like the attack and crit damage that Doman gives, you give that to Gilgamesh, and now Gilgamesh is, uh, he's doing pretty good at that point. Third skill, 20% attack, and 20% attack more for allies with evil alignment except himself, and now he's able to apply it. This is the issue I was talking about, like, 
two skills, two of his skills relied on you having enough stars. That that isn't a good situation. It's it's one thing if it was only this. It, like if it was only like you need 10 stars and then you can turn the party evil. They didn't need to buff it. You literally weren't able to use this skill, and this skill was only half effective. It was like granted you could just run him with evil servants. But if you have any other servants that are like not evil, you can't you have to wait to use the skill for another turn. So his kit. Very cohesive, cohesive now. Eva of Resist, 12.5. Crit damage, 11%. Anti-caster, but he's single target, so you're not likely to bring him, but at the same time, caster has good refund. Uh, and lore accurate is because Holmes was originally supposed to be a caster, but he is not a caster. MP, single target, 12 hit buster, and reduces their damage before, their defense before damage. All he needs is an MP upgrade, and then he this guy is good to go. Uh, Moriarty is like one of the few servants on this list I'm actually not concerned with because it's they just do not want to give this guy an MP upgrade. He needs one, and I feel like in the current meta, like they're not gonna just give him more damage. Like I think this MP, if they upgrade it, is gonna be disgusting. Like, and it is going to be an answer to, like, uh, actually, let's just, yeah, let's bring up Ruler Moriarty. He, I honestly think he, she should get our mod I would not be against him getting a one turn power mod against good or evil one like one of those two it like actually doesn't matter just a power mod for one turn against good or evil one of those two and then Moriarty is I think he would go into like EX I think that would be like the safest EX like you can imagine for an archer. Cuz he he barely has any competition. Yeah, just like give him a normal effect. Like a good MP upgrade and this guy is EX. Uh right now though, you're going to send A+. Plus. Because there is another single target buster uh, servant here. Uh, all right. So, bathroom real quick. Fourteen. 21. We're getting a lot of this done. Knocking this out. Uh, yeah, I gotta take leak a bit back. One sec.
coffee after this. All right. So, Emia Alter. Oh. This guy is at the top of the list. Technically. He's technically up here, but I have issues with it. Uh, specifically for just like even a challenge quest, he's there. <sighs> there are things in his kit to just make this not fun. And granted, this is one of the characters I have probably the least experience using. I have used him with this buff, and I don't like it for challenge quests. Uh, below 9k H, uh, attack, 12.2k HP, so lower ends of uh, four stars, but not terrible. 0.43% gains. It makes sense with these hit counts. I don't have a problem with the gains. Uh, it comes more from card buffs than like is what he gets while he's buffed up versus when he's not. And a lot of it has to do with this shit. The three attack, five turns. This shit is... If you're using him with Tomomo, I have way less issues. But the issue is you have to use him with Tomomo if you want good uptime. Uh, you have to be Tomomo spamming. You have to be reducing um, the downtime on all this shit. Because 50% defense, three attacks, five turns. That is nice. Along with the damage cut, it makes it so he barely takes damage. He has that same shit on this skill. Three attacks, three turns. Uh, for all card buffs. This is not bad. But it is easy to use this shit up. If you are doing uh, a challenge quest, this is basically telling you you cannot do arts crits. You have to do... Uh, other you have to be clicking the other cards otherwise your mp is going to suffer now granted it is only 30 percent, so it's not like oh without this buff he's not going to do any damage it's not that it's just like you're you have to be a, like if you have any kind of uh break points you need to hit this is gonna fuck with it again unless you're using tomomo and even with using tomomo this isn't going to have 100% uptime. It might have it might have better uptime, but it's still not going to be 100%. This lets you start from zero, so any kind of setups that requires uh, your looping, like black rail looping where you don't have to do carding, yes, it's good, but if you hit the point where you do not one-shot and you only have an arts card, it is going to affect probably how much you clear. It, this is a damage. This is a damage check thing. Um, and one that just like is infuriating to have. Because you can't help it sometimes. I do a lot of stuff where I'm not being the most efficient in farming. And stuff like this would just piss me the fuck off for doing the storm pods. If we get a node that is one 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 of just single target uh sabers if I just feel you're gonna run into issues. And maybe this is just like lack of using him. But it just feels like this is a pro like they 100% solved this. This skill 100% better. I just feel like this is going to be this is an issue. This is a personal issue. Uh, and then you also have this. This is the other big issue. This is where it really screws you over if you do not if you do not have enough damage because this is what Saito has. But unlike, but this is an even bigger concern. Now, if you actually do have to face guard, your damage is fucked. 
Before it was hard refund, but this is a huge drop in attack. This is two Castoria skills that you just lost because you had to face guard. This damage here, you only MP'd. You only MP'd. You only MP'd. It is going to fall off if you have to do any face guarding in this wave. Uh, and again, if you're using Tom mode to reduce cooldowns, you're not farming. So this is not going to have 100% uptime. Magic resist 12.5% and crit damage 10%. Mana loading start easier at Black Rail. Anti Archer, he hates himself, so he's going to kill Emia. Single target 10 hit MP. Pierce's defense and chance to drain. I have way less of an issue with this MP than I do his skills. I'll be real. His, his MP is fine the way it is. I guess his drain chance sucks, but at least you can get it 100%, and at 80%, it's almost... Like, this is something you can pretty much rely on, and I think it's... And it is higher than what... Squirt Tori has, isn't she 70? So like if you if you shit talk this, you literally you literally have to be shit talking uh Squirt Tori as well. Uh roll for Ej Ejmia. I feel like I had him. I feel like I should have gotten him on an account. I just haven't. Um No, I haven't gotten him. I don't have him on any account, but I can't be rolling on a BB banner. Uh, to get him right now. He he is actually a servant I would probably use a ticket on. Oh my fucking god. I swear to fucking god. I like. I don't want to roll Daiko. Because I don't. <laughs> uh, but I might need to. I really don't want Bunyan. Alright. That's tangent. Alright. So. Sorry. This 100% is a biased opinion. Because I know some people, he does the job. He does. He brings the damage as a four, like level 84 star. So if you grail him, the attack buff isn't that big of a deal. It's still an issue, but it's not as noticeable because like he has more attack. Um, that he doesn't have to rely on that 40%, but it's still an issue. Uh, Lortoria is just, like, easier to use and not frustrating, and if things go south, you have lee leeway. You have, like, zero leeway with him. Yeah, ease, ease of use is not there. Ease of use is definitely here. I would like I would night and day pick him over Artemis a hundred percent. I would never pick Artemis over him. Um. Yeah, just like everything else about him, it's his MP is good, and yeah. He's better than Artemis, but that that's such a low bar. And he still goes into A, even with that low-hanging fruit. All right. Uh, I need my coffee. Not time yet for the coffee, because I need the big cup. I need my big cup filled. Uh, so next. Whoa, this one's tragic. Oh, this one is tragic. All right, Helena. Oh boy. Uh, I have not heard any good things about this character. I have used her like once, and I was not happy. 
It was oh my fucking god. Yes, she can black real loop. But like you have to use her bait like you especially basically have to use her like you're using a rider. How they're like geared to fighting um casters. That is basically this as an archer. So You're gonna have problems if there's any berserkers, number one. Number two, she's gonna have damage issues if you have to bring her type neutral. Like, oof, oof. 9.4K attack, 11.4K uh, 11 HP. Star weight, Sarge, and Archer numbers, MP charge, again, 0.38. Again, like, this matches up. These match up. This makes sense. Three hit, five hit arts at 0.38. But usually this is on triple arts. Usually characters that have this have triple arts. And the extra attack is dog shit. This is so fucking bad. Party wide, 20% battery, five stars per turn, just like regular Elena. Damage plus. Damage plus. You're not getting an attack buff. You're not getting <laughs> MP damage. This isn't a power mod. This is you deal. 40,000 damage, and then you add 2,000 to it. This is the worst fucking... This is one of the worst fucking skills in the game. At least the drain is guaranteed. Otherwise, this shit does fucking nothing. It is one of the most nothing burger skills in the entire fucking game. And honestly, if they took this part off, it would just be a guaranteed drain and they could bring the cooldown lower. This part actively fucking hurts it for no goddamn reason. And then you have a one turn arts buff with debuff immunity one time, five turns. This is cool. This is 100% uptime. But why? Why? Why do you literally treat summer servants like dog shit? What servant? Okay, wait. What servant was even on this banner? What servant was she being summoned with? I have... It wasn't Nero. It wasn't... Oh. It was made alter. Holy shit. This must must have been a dead fucking day. Th and this must have been like the most banner sales they would have gotten. Holy shit. They were all it was only up for a week. Oh no, this this was up for a week. You literally had to wait a week to not get spooked by Helena. And that probably fucked the banner sales for up made altar. Like, this character actually might have fucking negatively impacted how Made Alter's sales. And is why Made Alter got such a lackluster buff because of Elena, like, fucking up her banner. Can you fucking imagine if that's an actual justification? Uh, 20%, it's awkward as shit for her because, uh,. You're still gonna have to use a Castoria MP. You can get it if you want. Uh, anti Archer, cool, I guess. No, it's not, it doesn't really matter that much for her. Four hit AoE, at least it's not three hits. Um, battery afterwards, cool. So she does. She doesn't need to loop as much. Debuff resist and defense down. Like there's stuff in the her kit that's there. It's just like. These are two, like, horrible skills for what's supposed to be a looper. And this is, like, lack lot. 
I didn't even see the fucking cooldown. Her skills are just lackluster. They're bad. This is okay, but they're bad. They're bad, and the game, like, Lasagna should feel bad for having the skills this the way they are right now. D. D. You're D tier. Chat, I actually am curious. I am truly curious. Who would have an easier time looping? Helena? Or, oh, wait, no. Because, like, I'm about to, like, talk mad shit. Like, maybe Summer Tomoe actually would have an easier chance looping than Helena. At the very least, she'd have an easier time getting overkill. But I don't, I don't want to actually put that on record that I think Tomoe would have an easier time. Yeah. Like, she has the bare essentials. But if Tomoe got a single buff, she'd probably loop better than her. And they both have one turn arts buffs too, and I'm still like saying it like that. Huh. Yeah. I, I don't have good things to say about the servant. Use them, and I felt so did not want to use them again. All right, see you, Goomba. All right, next one, we have Tomoe. And we are almost at the halfway point. I want to eat lunch uh, and eat something while, uh, or watch something while we do that. All right. Tomoe, I do have good, I have good opinions about this one. Oh, shit, what the fuck? This? I really needed to get the taste of shit out of my mouth because Tomoe, A, she's adorable as a gamer girl and like respectfully, like she cares about her husband. Like she is not, she's like the girl, like a female friend that you're like friends with and like there's no, there, there shouldn't be sexual tension with Tomoe. And I'm fine with that for servants, especially her introduction. Was it like, wasn't her introduction like Archer of Inferno? Yeah, that's, uh, I know it's like saying it, they, they're not the same Archer of Inferno, different from Tomoe. Uh, but. but I'm not gonna lie, it is hard. To like someone when like in a relationship with the first time you see them is them literally burning a city to the ground. Uh, I know that gets some people off, but uh, I I'm sure the master of Chaldea has some reservations. Uh, I mean, that applies to everyone that shows up in Shimosa, I guess. So it's not unique to Tomoe. Uh, enough yapping. 0.87%. Yeah, I don't even know where I was going with that. 0.87%. Uh, this looks like a Saber deck, but extra attack good, and it works well with this here. Uh, stars, again, not going to gen that much, but a Mighty Chain, it will. 20%, basically 20% attack and 30% MP damage, essentially. Uh, you might get this buffed. He also might not, and honestly, it doesn't matter because this is basically a fucking mana burst as long as she can loop her MP. And she kind of can, uh, because Mighty Chains, and she's a buster unit. And again, this is going to be challenge quest, not farmer. Not ranking her anywhere close to as a farmer. Or single target farmer. Uh, star weight, three turns of 600%. This pretty much guarantees the star. That yeah, guarantees her to the stars, and she busts everyone in the party by 50%. This skill... Definitely could get buffed. Definitely see this skill getting buffed. Like this at least to 100%. Uh, may And maybe some more damage. Third skill. One time five turn guts. 3k uh, max HP added. This 
also could get buffed, bring the cooldown, and... Because, like, they don't... Guts lately have been, like, five up for five turns, down for one. And I feel like this is more of an issue. Because as an archer, she'd have Sargent issues. This helps fix it. This, I feel, is an okay Guts. It could be better. Yeah, yeah, like I feel if they were to buff Tomoe, it would be her guts first. But that's just me. Magic resists 17.5%. Independent action A, 10% crit damage. And Madness Enhancement E for 2% buster up. Uh, I am happy she has Madness. In, like, it is a very small Madness Enhancement. She still has it as an archer, which is weird. But I mean, like, Kiyohime has an EX as a Lancer, so that's not... I don't fault people. She just has it very slightly. Uh, Anti-Berserker, again, very nice to have. And she doesn't have a battery. Oh, yeah, honestly. Like, I don't want to be that guy, but if they were to buff her, they'd probably reduce the cooldown and give her a battery and then call it a day. They they do that a lot. Wouldn't be a bad thing for her, but it it'd be boring. That that's that's it. It would be boring. It would be a very boring skill buff if that's what they decide to do. Uh, and then they just make this like interesting. But she ha she has a lot of room to grow. She's only gotten this one buff. Damage to one enemy reduces her crit attack chance twenty percent for five turns. So as long as you can ramp up, you can actually get this going. 2,000 burn base, and then you amp the burn up by overcharge. Uh, if they really wanted to make it fun, fuck the battery and get, reduce the cooldown and give her power mod against uh, burning enemies. If they really want to make it fun. Uh, Honey Lake kind of can already do that, though, so... But you can't balance a character over one C existing in the game. Otherwise, servants would be balanced around them actually having black rail. Like Karen. Karen, like, yeah, then the situation with Karen wouldn't exist. Like, if you balance characters around, there is this one CE that exists that actually fucking makes makes it like broken, it wouldn't happen. Karen would not have her debuff the way it is that it work. They would have coded it so that Black Row wouldn't work. They don't. They're not going to do that. And Honey, Honey Lake really does fix some of these issues. Um, yeah, just like a burn that lasts as long as just like too good for something like Honey Lake, or like you don't. You're not. You don't have to run command codes anymore. And can focus on damage or something else. Uh, she's solid. She's not bad. But she's not... I would not compare her to... M Emmy Alto or Tristan. She's just solid. No gimmicks needed. Easy to use. And... Nice to look at. But consensual, respectfully. Yeah, I was I was talking too much shit about cucking people. I really like respectfully. I'm not. She has a husband in fate, and the guy looks sick. Bring him to FGO so she can be happy with her hubby, just like Siegfried and um, Sigurd. Uh, honestly, that would be sick if he is the uh, white day servant. Because like the guy, the guy had no presence in the collab. Welcome back, Uba. All right, next few more, and then I'm taking a break. Fuji, no, she has gotten so many more raid ups. This used to be a super rare servant. 
they buffed her and now they kind of, they don't throw her on random banners but they have started putting her more in the story she has an interesting kit that doesn't have direct uh, like you wouldn't bring her outside of niche but in niche like she has survivability that buster usually doesn't have super high base attack for a four star like at least 700 more than her competition low hp to compensate though like super low hp like her her hp at level 100 is literally what a lot of these four stars have at 80 star weight star gen normal numbers mp charge 0.59% and her hit counts are at, at the very least average, and they just play well into each other for like mighty chains. First skill, 35% buster for three turns, ignores defense for three turns, and MP gen up for three turns at 30%. This is just solid. Absolutely not a farmer. The 100% this is a challenge quest utility, and there's nothing wrong with that. Not, not for a servant like this, where she wants to be spamming her MP. Evasion, ignores evasion for three turns uh, and 15 stars. Again, like, only thing that stops her is invo peers. Everything else just goes through. Third skill, max HP reduction, 2,000 damage taken, though. You pay 2,000 to, like, take off 2,000 for all damage you take. I mean, as long as, like, as long as you take, uh, it, literally, if you take a single point of damage, then this is worth. That's how I like to view it. If you take zero damage, uh, or if you didn't get hit at all, this is useless. But if you take, took a single point of damage, this skill isn't useless and you just save yourself ex uh, however much times you got hit the damage like you get hit three times you took three damage you just stop yourself from taking six thousand damage for that one turn so that's nine hits nine times to reduce the damage potentially for the cost of like two thousand like you could have gotten killed this hp you ate could have gotten you killed with how many uh chances you have to get one shot or just like chipped away. Not one shot. Uh, chipped away. Uh, guts one time three turns and revive with one HP. Again, like this might be enough to like actually keep you alive. Like you have such high damage cut that like even with one HP you just don't take damage. Not the most useful thing, but it's just something I want to point out. 12.5% uh, debuff resistance, 11% crit damage, and arts up 8%. Anti-Assassin, uh, Shiki, yeah, Shiki, uh, 20 battery. She does not have a battery in her kit, so this is kind of just nice to have. I can see them putting a battery on this skill because Shiki got a, a ba uh, Shiki has a battery. I can see them giving her a battery here because there's not much else to this skill. NP, three hit uh, to one enemy. Inflex, inflex buff block, one time three turns. Super effective damage against super large enemies and reduces attack by 10% for three turns. Buff block is most important part. And super large is two alter egos. So, like, it's either you'd be bringing a pretender, which Hephaishin, or a berserker probably not something you want to do against proteic she might just like get so much hp that as like she just outlasts the berserkers and then tiamat uh can damage rush you but that is not this one you don't really fight this one so not an issue uh ch -ch -ch. Yeah, super large is mostly just gonna be like other enemies, like more, uh, 
multi-core. Like, I would say that this would show up more multi-core than what against an actual servant boss. Which, in which case, it is fine that she doesn't have a battery. It's just still, again, lackluster that she doesn't have one. I think it's it's pretty fair to put them in the same tier. Yeah, because Tomoe is just consistently good. She's consistently good too with a niche, but the niche does is rare to pop up. Like if it was just large and super large, it'd be different, but it is like and it's not giant either. It's specifically super large and not giant. Uh I think getting Giant would have been, would have helped too. More areas. Uh, next up, we have, and this is the last one before break. Barbecue with salad, uh, fries. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hungry now. All right, last one for the break. Kron, Kyron. However you want to pronounce it. One of the most goaded senseis in all history. He taught pretty much every single Greek hero you can think about. These, these guys all learn from this guy. 9.2k attack. 12.2k uh, HP. Solid across the board, average, but nothing wrong with that with his type of kit. 0.68% gain. And average hit counts across the board. First skill, turn of dodge, 20% uh, defense, like he has one of the best eyes of, eye, of, eye of the mind. Yeah, like him, and I don't think there is EX for this skill. Yeah, he has the best version of the skill. So again, not likely that he gets it buffed, but 20% is 20%. Second skill, 50% crit damage for the party, 15 stars, and does slight damage to himself. Omni car buff for whatever servant you want targeted. So this specifically nowadays is, is good because of Yui. There are, unfortunately, this is skill three. So you can't have an esports Charon that has this max out. Like that is going to be easy to die. You're going to have to like put a taunt on it. But the targeted it being 30 is just like really nice in setups to where you can double pop Yui. Or not even double pop, just where you can use Yui. You're adding so much value to whatever DPS you want. And you don't need to like bring in Ruler Scotty because you like like, yeah, a servant that does not want Ruler Scotty but wants Yui would want Kron, and you get a lower cost. Ruler Scotty just provides so many other buffs, too. Seventeen point five percent debuff resistance, crit damage, and divinity. No battery. You would be more multi core anyway. So Castoria, twenty battery just helps. Anti dip, uh, anti rider. This is Achilles, and you can get extra attack. It's not the worst thing, but not. He's. Uh, yeah, I I wouldn't say he's a refund spammer. I I don't think you're gonna be hitting money chains that often because more likely than not you're buffing someone else than him, so he's not even gonna get. That much benefit from this. Or it wouldn't happen that often. MP. Removes defensive buffs. Activate first. Huge. And extra damage against earth attribute. And insult to injury. Reduce crit attack chance. So it, you can spam this MP. Against earth attribute is nice. But the issue is going to come from... Like refund and just self buffing. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's party wide slash support. He can do it himself, but he would rather buff someone else. 
There are a shitload of Earth Attribute Sabers, though. Like, half of them. Half, like... I Yeah, I want to say half of Sabers he has an advantage over. So, even if you want him to just be the only, like, he's one-shotting someone, he at least doesn't have a small niche. It's not like Fuji no how she only has, like, one Servants. If we get a Earth Attribute Saber node, like, Heron is just going to smack the shit out of him. Like, fairly easily as well. Like, you got a really good mod being an archer. Uh... MP damage. Yeah, like, as a support, he's, like, fine. As Earth, like, anti-Earth, like, you would bring him over Emya. He just wouldn't be refunding. It's like, in our raid, you'd use k -Ron. In farming, you'd more use Emya. Because it be, he's up here because he can do do he can do two very different things. Yeah, yeah, he has two very different roles. Right. Got my poppy. Okay. So, yeah. He's here not because he's better than Emya at single target farming. It's not. It's because he can do multi core. He technically can do single core farming. Um, like he is on this list. And Earth Attribute. Ah, oh, all right, back from the break. And where are we? Uh, Napoleon. Yeah, we're talking about Napoleon. All right, so out of all of the AoE Buster archers, Napoleon is probably what should be considered the baseline. He is like what, like he is, I don't want to say he's the most mid out of all of them, but he is like the most tame, like probably the most tame compared to like the peaks of his competition. 12 point K, uh, basically uh 12 K attack, low ish HP, but not too low. Uh, no, actually, yeah, no, this is too low for a five star. This is almost 12k, like, this is pushing berserker levels HP. Uh, 0.59 percent <clears throat> gain. These hit counts again balance around him critting, and unlike even Tesla, he does not have MP gain to make this easier. He is very clearly geared towards. Uh, I don't even want to say gear towards Vich meta, but he like he functions. He needs to function in the Vich meta. He does not have uh, or Oberon Vich meta. He did. He does not really function outside of it. And it kind of shows in his skills. Uh, twenty percent attack for the party, along with twenty percent for one turn. Unfortunately, this cannot be double stacked, but the first part can be. So 60% attack for turn three. 
second skill, 20% attack, uh, 20% MP damage, and star gen for one turn. In normal farming, this honestly is fine as long as this is maxed out. Because this part makes it so turn two, you have good damage. And then you also will have stars for next turn. But that also has to do with... Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine because of it's not a one-hit MP. Third skill, 20% battery. <clears throat> three turns of ignore invincibility. And 10 stars per turn. This being 30 is what part of what holds him back because he needs Oberon, but Gilgamesh needs Oberon too. So as long as he's functional, it's not that big of a deal. And he basically has Pioneer of the Stars. The, like this is basically Pioneer of the Stars with a twist. So it really is Pick Your Poison at this point. Debuff resistance 15%. Independent action C for a crit damage. You need this if you want to do farming and not use K-Scope. And the rider here wasn't this because a lot of the Valkyries were riders? Yeah, like isn't it because a lot of the Valkyries are riders in Lost Belt 2? I actually don't know the exact reason, but I don't. When I think Ryder, I don't think of anyone associated with uh, Napoleon. When I could be wrong, I don't know. Maybe this is uh, Marie Antoinette. It might. It might be a Marie Antoinette. Uh, and MP. Has been buffed. Five hit AOE. Ignores defense, so it's got the wombo combo. Damaged all enemies. 20 stars like Ishtar. And super effective against Divinity. So this guy is literally uh, a hodgepodge of... I don't want to say Gilgamesh, but it feels like he's more a combination of uh, Tesla and Ishtar combined. It like splits the difference of the extremes. Yeah, he's Napoleon splits the difference of the extremes and he becomes more heavily focused on Harder fights than he does challenge quests. I mean, not... Yeah, let me rephrase it. On harder fights than he does farming. Like, farming, he is okay, but in a challenge quest, like, there are cases you'd bring him instead. Uh, and it mostly has to do with uh, Invul, like, the Invul Pierce stuff. Like, because Ishar isn't guaranteed to get it. Tesla is... But he's also story locked and specific to servants. Well, Napoleon can be used in other situations than mining servants. Yes, he can buster farm. Any any unit with 30% can buster farm. Yeah. Damage isn't bad. He's under S char. And like he can like he can have like different his like his numbers would be similar to Ishtar and he just has different utility. Uh on, let's switch to AoE. Yeah, like I I would not put him that much I, I, Honestly, same tier as Ishtar. Honestly, same tier as Ishtar. He definitely still needs another buff. But there isn't that much more you can do with him before you actually make him broken.
Like, I do not think they could make this three turns because this is basically a tactics with star gen. I could see them doing it. It's just, is that going to do that much? Because I honestly, I don't even think just this, just star gen is enough for a tactics buff. They might honestly slap on crit damage. And hey, if it pushes Ishtar to getting a buff after that, uh, I'm not going to complain. But yeah, damage is relative to Ishtar. Util like more uh, challenge quest utility. With a wider reaching, with a wider reaching niche that doesn't only need servants. Yeah. Yeah, like in a raid, he would actually pop off more than Gilgamesh and Tesla because like raids are not only servants. Like for a similar reason as Ishtar, like she wouldn't be as affected as it. Like, but their base damage is still outclassed by these two. Like regardless of niche, they're really getting outclassed here. All right, next up. Jarcher. And this is another biased one because I don't have the highest opinion of Jarcher, but I have to acknowledge, uh, especially after using Zenobia the way I have, uh, how stupidly easy it is to farm with her. Uh, her refund is actually fucking stupid. Uh, her biggest weakness is lack of damage in both crits and MP, but it's definitely not refund. And having a lack of damage is solved with Black Rail. Having a lack of crit damage is solved by bringing in another support. Uh, and that is with even substandard setups like Paracelsus and not another actual support. Like, yeah, like, I think Zenobia has more value, but like, out the box at MP1, John is uh, uh I, I really don't want to say it. I really don't. Base attack, it's low, like Andromeda low, like ba basically the same type of shit, like low base attack, super high HP. But John isn't supposed to be a tank, she's a tank because she's an arts unit at this point. There is naturally tanky because of Castoria, but she, John, if she wanted to do better, would want more base attack. So, AKA Grail her. And you'd have less issues. MP charge points, uh, 68%. Honestly, kind of low. It just shows how much of a spam, like MP spammer she's supposed to be. Because her face guard refund is reliant on crits. And out of all the archers, she is definitely one that. Face cards suffer because you are supposed to be critting on this card, on this unit. You should not not be critting. Uh, yep. And extra attack. It's okay. Slightly held, held back, but like this is actually better for her here than it is here. Uh, even though this can't crit, you'll see more gains out of hit than if this was lower and you had hit more hit counts on here in the MP. First skill, good survivability, three turn arts buff at 30%, along with two hits of invul. Uh, if you are using her with Castoria, make sure you pop this, otherwise your invul is not going to last uh, past this turn. You need to pop this first, because invul works, whatever is popped first is the one that actually matters. Second skill, 40% battery, slightly awkward, but not really it this is actually like the way this works in a double cast story setup is you actually get to sit save the full 30 batteries for her if you even need it so like if if refund is not an issue you don't need the append you max this out and then just pop uh all of the Castoria buffs, and you don't pop any of the 20s on John. You pop them on the Castorias, 
and then you're triple MPing on turn one. Uh, 20 MP damage, good. Crit damage on water side, it's 50, but like water side is so. Like this is it, this is a similar issue with Andromeda. Like water side, it's a little too specific in when it actually happens. Because you look at this Valentine's event, Chocolate River doesn't count as water side. Oof. But yeah, if you're on water side, her crit damage looks a whole lot better. Like she's actually able to make use of the stars, but uh, this character ne like needs actual crit damage. Third skill, twenty percent attack, twenty percent uh, for good alignment. Uh, she is not even good herself, so she doesn't even get the benefit of this. Uh, L is L. She's missing attack that she could have. Like two of these are conditional. That shouldn't be conditional. There, there, it's just wasted potential. Like multi core, cool, but she is a as strong as single core farmer as she is. She should be getting more buffs herself. Got an ad. Support Jarcher. Yeah, you th you've used her against two enemies and you still almost won. Debuff 17.5%, resistance, 10% crit damage, and again, like Andromeda, gauge per turn on water side. Like, this little bit is enough that if you're looping Berserkers, you're going to loop. Like an Avenger. Like, it, all this makes sense. It just sucks it's only Waterside. And half the time, Waterside doesn't count when it should. Anti-Berserker, really nice append. You do not need this if you max this out, but it just makes your life a whole lot easier. MP has no normal effect, and you get 10 stars per turn, scales with overcharge. Uh, MP upgrade. She needs an MP upgrade. Because there is no normal effect. Even over the skill buffs, I think she needs an MP upgrade. Luckily, unlike uh, Mordred, she does not have the same damage issue. But her damage is low, considering she doesn't have a niche. Like this is this is very low damage, considering no niche. Like matching Elena, yeah, but this is with a a forty percent arts buff, so that uh, kinda doesn't count. But like more like Bargus, more consistent units are coming out, and Bargus can go even higher. By using like Shufu, Vargas can go higher by using Shufu. So lower cost, and you can use more farming seas. But Vargas is not as good a farmer. I don't. I don't want to give her ex. So right now, a plus. But let's be honest. Oh wait, no, she does have competition. She does have competition as an AoE arts farmer. I forgot what year we're in. And also, I hear Plushy whining about her too much. Next up, Ashvatman. Rage in a can, but somehow wholesome. Partially. This guy, like, it, because he's a male, he's not going to get an Avenger form. Or not likely, as likely to get a, an easy Avenger form. Like, is, like, be real. Like, this guy is, is as angry as he possibly can, like an Avenger. It's honestly surprising he does not actually have Avenger passives. Because I'm pretty sure in his lore it is like pretty Avenger like. But again, I'm not the biggest. I don't know Hindu mythology that that well. High base attack for a four star, low HP. But this is a positive because he wants low HP. 
The issue is he does not have a guts to help him with that like uh, other servants do. But all that is going to take is a guts. I mean, a buff. But where they put the guts is the issue. Not even on the bond C. All right. So 0.58%. These hit counts is actually like fan fucking tastic. The quick cards actually will refund. Not as arts cards, but not that far off to the point that if you're doing a money chain, you're probably putting quick last because they have a card buff. Uh yeah again head counts across the boards are fucking fantastic this is weakness but not not concerning not that concerning considering like the refund of these actually will be pretty good and you'll get some good star gen on the buster guards don't talk about star gen often but even at eight percent with five hits you're still should gen something three percent battery and a full turn of invul 30% buster and three attacks, five turns for buster cards. I have issues with, with this for other cards. Not the way this works. I actually don't care whether it's three attacks because the car buff isn't what is used up. It's this on attack buff where you inflict defense down. This you do want to burn through as quickly as possible. The faster you burn through this, the more you get the benefits. And it goes the same for this skill. 30% quick. Every time you hit with a quick, you get more crit damage. 30%. You do have to, like, the only annoying point part is trying to time this if the fight is longer than three turns. But in, like, a raid situation, this doesn't matter. You're trying to damage rush as soon as possible. And even in challenge quests, you're inflicting defense down and crit, crit up. You're going to, like, break bars significantly easier whether you actually use all this up or not and you really should be able to um this isn't this isn't going to be a case where like stuff isn't used up like you should just not be clicking the arts card because this stuff works on mp as well it is not it does not say normal attacks so you can ramp buster uh the buster down it happens on mp 20% debuff res, 12% crit damage, 5% uh, buster up, 10% crit damage more for buster cards, Debu mental debuff immunity, it cannot be charmed, and more uh, damage plus. You do want battery and anti-archer Juna. Pretty sure this is Juna. MP, damage to one enemy, removes defensive buffs, unfortunately, before, after damage, and then low HP. So the whole issue is that he does not have a way to actually get his HP lower, or if his HP gets too low, he doesn't have a way to, like, really benefit from it. He does not have a safety net, and Buster does not have a unit that gives, like, guts, like, uh, oh, wait, actually, yeah, it's Morgan, but I, well, Morgan is not, when I, maybe multi-core assassin saber, but she's not my first pick for what I would use for this, although they do actually have synergy. Yeah, no, because Morgan would, uh, huh. Like, now that I actually think about it, Morgan works just so well. Like, she actually does give him what he needs. It's just like, you can't, like, Morgan cannot be the only way to sustain him. Yeah, that would completely be no dependent. But like Morgan scaling HP, uh, scaling attack buff based on low HP. So he'd get more damage on his MP along with the attack buff. But I still would want him to have a guts for himself. 
the issue is like, where would you buff a unit like this to give him a guts? Because you cannot put it on a five turn. You cannot put like a decent guts on these skills. I don't think you can put a decent guts on this skill. I doubt, I doubt they will give a buster DPS a guts, like able to get a guts on MP. Like that, I don't see happening. This, like this character, like he, I really like him. I like his design. It's just, this is a character that is actually hard to buff to fix one of the flaws in the kit. <sighs> he works so fucking well in Scotty though. I mean, not Scotty in bitch meta. He works so goddamn well. Like bitch does get it. Like bitch does help his uh, damage just by going low, but not, enough it's not enough for what he needs um not like hey uh, I th I think he's significantly better than Tomoe. I think he's in like he like because he's Buster and quick, and Tomoe would have problems getting stars that he would not have. Yeah. Like and like being able to like. I don't usually talk about the double stacking, but for this specifically, like you could easily max out to a hundred percent defense and like, j like literally just depending on card RNG, you might do that. Like if you, like all you need is like one buster card in turn two and you max it out to a hundred percent from the MP and then the buster card uh, afterwards. Well, this would have a slower ramp up time, but it's general crit damage. Yeah, no, no. A. He he's going in A. Cause it's it's what the current meta is, and for Buster and Quick, it's like you do crit damage. You're doing crit damage too. Uh next. Oof. Oh, this one. Oki. This one is a damn shame. 8.8k attack, 12.4k uh, 12 HP, 0.62%. Gains are okay, and the hit counts are awesome. It is going to be damage. It is definitely damage. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah. This one looks nice. I uh, I truly this one looks just different. Like I don't I don't know if it's the sunlight changing the color of her hair or like she's at, like her hair is actually a different color. I don't know. No, it's the same color. It's the same color. It's the it's the lighting that changes it. I don't know. I think Yeah. Like they're about the same, but this one just looks better to me. 0.62, good hit counts, but critting on her is going to be an issue. 
Three attacks, three turns of 50% crit damage, and a one attack, one turn dodge. This is dog shit. Like, how do you make a skill worse than Sigurd's Runic Eyes? Like, fucking actually. This is an insult. This skill is a fucking insult. Chance to taunt one enemy for three turns. 20% attack on top of it, and ignore the entire party gets ignore evasion. The only time this has anything to do with it is like if you're doing some taunt shit. Uh, yeah, like if you're. I don't think I'm like. If it's like a multi core thing and like you're intentionally not killing with the MP and you need to do some like really weird shit. Like. Okay, so you have three enemies, and, like, you're using two face cards. You hit the one in the back. No, because the taunt works weirdly, like, weirder than that. I honest, Yeah, no, I can't think of a, like, good use case for this at the current moment. Like, well, you can do this, but, like, it, I don't see the purpose unless like it breaks a game mechanic like this would have to like break a challenge quest mechanic for this to even matter 30 percent arts and buster like it's weird that she this this skill is just so bad it just brings her down she basically only has two skills i think i think that's what it is she basically only has two skills 17 5 percent debuff resistance 10 percent crit damage Damage plus eight, uh, eight percent arts up and a two hundred damage cut permanently. Anti assassin, uh, battery. She doesn't have it for herself. Uh, yeah, like four hit AOE damage to all enemies increases party buster performance up twenty percent and then crit damage up thirty percent. She is trying to be like. The assassin one as a sub DPS and it just does not fucking work. This would work if she was arts. Like, I hate to be that guy, but if this was arts, this would work so much better. D just because Buster is as selfish as it is. Like, unless they plan on letting her swap MPs, I don't see I don't see it like this. Or if it's like it adds arts too, then it's okay. But like multi core like this would work better if it involved arts too. I'm a I'm not the biggest proponent for Buster and arts, but like this is a case where you would actually need it. It would give her more utility. But right now, just Buster, Buster, Buster by itself does not play well in multi core because of like the buffers themselves. When Oberon is involved, sure, but that's still not enough. Not for me, at least. I still rank her higher than Narf here. But she, she's a summer servant that's suffering like this. Next up, Calamity Jane, and this is first EX, and it is solely this skill because of how Buster works right now. Buster success rate, 40% crit damage, 1,500 star weight, dodge for one turn, 20 battery, ignores invincibility on one skill. For both Quick and Buster, for how abundant stars are, this is, like, free. This is so fucking free and ignores a lot of challenge quests. The only issue that this is on skill three, but this is the only skill most people care about, and if you're, like, it does not matter, MP1 or MP3. 
for pure utility, there I don't think there's another servant in the there isn't. There is no other utility support on this list that work functions anywhere near it should in this meta. Kron is the only other support I would consider on this list. And he's not his buffs are too generic. These are so these are so specific and you can build around it that I like she is one of the servants off a ticket that you really should uh pick. Uh ch -ch -ch -ch. all right. Let's get into it as like outside of just that support utility. Cause it's not something that I, you can even put in extremely niche. I think I said it last year. It's like extremely niche is not only using challenge quests. It's something they can do like so extremely well that no competition. Like this is not niche. This is like pure utility. Low attack only but only slightly below 9k it's it's not that bad honestly i i kind of wish our hp was even lower not gonna lie i kind of wish it was like 10k or something but this ain't that bad either uh mp charge good for our accounts but not great like we've seen better very recently. Uh, it's still good gains, but it's not the best hit counts. Reduce it, enemy's attack 20% for three turns and crit attack chance on a weird number, but it's sabotage. Uh, I don't think they buff the skill that often. No. No, they have not buffed the skill, but not many servants have it. Second skill, uh, drain to all enemies by one and guarantee it's not chance space. 20% attack buff, 20% uh, attack buff to the party, but this is only a chance. And 10% battery to the entire party. So along with all this other stuff, it is a 30% battery to a unit, not 20. That I think is like helps elevate it because again, the, the 20 append like all you need is 50 and a bitch getting in a bitch setup getting 50 is not is not hard and then also you can time it differently depending on if you actually need it or not it's just this is just good utility for a system where getting 40 stars is not hard so even if you can't get the full 50 getting 40 is not hard getting 40 is not hard 15% debuff resistance, 10% quick, 10% uh, star gen, assassin skill on archer. So if we ever get summer uh, calamity Jane, she's going to be an assassin more likely than not. 11% crit damage. Anti foreigner makes sense because she's certain verse. You could get this for her own farming. Like, if you can get 50 stars, like, she can. This is 50% battery, but, I mean, probably you're probably not using it for her. Uh, like, Ruler, like, Ruler Scotty, too. Like, it's not just a bitch that drops the stars. So, if you want to use Calamity Jane, it would be double Ruler Scotty and bitch. And then you can reset the cooldown on this. So options are there. She like she can be the DPS if you need it. Uh defense ignores evasion. Defense down for two turns and quick res down for two turns. These numbers are super low, but they are multiplicative. And this one does help with refund. And it happens before damage. Like definitely if this was after damage, no. They would need to be three turns, but activates first. There's not real ramp up, but there is turn one. It does do more damage than turn two. So yeah, EX as a support and then as like a single target would be B, but her, her third skill utility.
puts her in here. Like, you cannot... Like, technically, Holmes would be better and easier, but, like, this is, it's also a lot of other buffs than just the Invul Pierce. It's not, and it's not the Wombo combo, but it does... It's, it's just so much shit. If she can die the next turn, then it is huge pog. Uh, all right, next, uh, this is another EX, this is another EX. When this guy gets going, you can't fucking stop him. You cannot fucking stop this guy. Giga Chad Orion, super high base attack. And the guy, like the guy's fucking. Okay. How tall is he? First off, how tall is he? Where are these stats come from? Chat, yeah, this is all this is this is seven foot eight. He's at he this is seven foot eight. And then like four hundred pounds. Holy shit. Like, I knew the guy was fucking juiced, but the guy is an actual fucking giant. Duh. <laughs> HP, it's low-ish, but it run healing command codes. If that's that much of a concern, he's not getting debuffed by anything. Uh, star weight, star gen, normal, MP charge, 0.96. The hit counts right now. Uh, Mighty Chains are a bit of an issue with him because he has an arts MP. Uh, that's that's the one complaint and is when you have to use the MP, it's not as good as other servants. Um just because it's a one hit buster, it's not gonna gen much. At at the very least in a mighty chain, the quick card if it crits is gonna net you a good amount of gain. But compared to like Herc or I, I'm trying to think like a single target. Like, face. <sighs> He's going to hit really hard, but refund you have to be conscious of because you do want to double stack his MP if possible just to get the train ro rolling. First skill, 50% buster up and power mod against wild beast demonic enemies. Oh, five turn. Super high damage. Uh, demonic enemy is going to pop up way more than Wild Beast. And one of them happens to be Ibuki. And yeah, if you've gone from high hand kill, like there is an Ibuki boss where uh, Orion just kind of does some clapping. Second skill, one time three turn guts. 20% attack and 20 stars on a six turn cooldown. Third skill, 500% star weight on attack activate uh, buff. If you do, if you attack with bust card, 100% crit damage for the rest of the turn. This is why you want to pop the MP like twice before you like pop this skill. Reason being is uh, so you have, like, so you don't have to waste these before you're ready. 12% EX, 12% uh, crit damage from independent action EX. Blessings of the Sea God. Uh, it's Divinity, but it's not called Divinity. Uh, damage cut. Yeah, he has Divinity trait. He's just not the 
divinity passive uh and toxic he always, like if he gets poisoned he takes more damage but it's such a low amount i wouldn't even worry about this and the chance of you even landing this is like th for this to matter is so unlikely like him actually taking damage from poison is like what the fuck are you doing like did you not pop the mp Anti-Archer, cool. Not a big deal, though. Uh, this is to start off faster, but, like, this, you should, like, this is your number one. Like, bar anything, like, you need this for him as a solo servant. So, all his skills are, like, one turn. Uh, not his MP. His MP is basically, like, another skill. Or you sh that's how you should treat it. Like, this is a skill for how much you need to be popping this. And the fact that you can double stack this. Not very easily, but somewhat easily. Ignores invincibility for three turns. 30% base attack buff. Debuff immunity for three turns. 10 stars per turn. And 100% crit damage for three turns. That ramps up. If you can spam your MP every turn... Pog, you're going to be doing so much fucking damage and you're going to hit the crit ceiling. You will hit the crit ceiling, uh, which is why this isn't the biggest thing. Why it's three attacks, three turns. Because, like, crit ceiling is a thing and you pop this twice and then you do buster, buster, buster and you hit the crit ceiling. If you are running with Vich, you hit the crit ceiling faster, so you don't need to do a uh, triple, like a full Buster Break Chain. You will still hit that, uh, I think it's 500% crit damage for the ceiling. Uh, yeah. He is very much user... Uh, you need to like know how to use him and when to pop the buffs. Otherwise, he will feel lackluster. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it would be better if he had a card buff. It'd be better if uh he had like gauge per turn or something, but when he's like if he's solo, he can just spam mighty chains and like they're MPing every other turn. Uh like solo, I think that is like the ideal way to use him. Like MP. Get what you can. Set up for a good turn next turn. Triple Buster. You get hit. Maybe you MP again or you do a Mighty Chain. Uh, issue is like he does not have healing. So you need to make sure he's not going to just straight up die. Healing command codes work, but he his guts is his hard survivability. So... If you're trying to like min turn, you have to be like resetting a whole lot. But it's just unga boonga crit damage. It is truly unga boonga crit damage. Like this guy hits like the explosive like if you know what you're doing, like his explosive power is like unmatched in this game. Like, Van Gogh is the only other unit that comes close to, like, this level of, like, power. And Van Gogh only has quick cards. Van Gogh can't spam, like, Buster Chains like this. She, like, naturally will just do less damage. But she's so much safer. All right. I'm going to stop glazing Giga Orion. He doesn't need the glazing. He's hoping Artemis is going to do it. But that bare body ain't gonna ain't gonna be the one that gets glazed. Yankee time would say Shonagun. She got her buff. Good that she got her buff. Does not really change my opinions on her. Wide reaching niches and they never align. She can do she has Giant net, but the net has a whole lot of holes in it. It's like it's like you're um at a, a Japanese festival. And you have like the really thin 
um, net and you're trying to catch a fish in it. That's like, and then that's made of paper. That shit's just gonna break half the time. And I'm not gonna lie, this ascension gives actually gives me a fucking headache. Like I like because I tell my kids at work like super bright colors they like actually bother me. Bright pink, yellow, white, light blue, bright red. Oh my god, I get a headache. This unironically gives me less of a headache. And this is even more color um fucked. Uh 12.2k attack is good. HP, it's okay. Not super high, but not terrible. It is on the lower end though. MP charge 0.57% and okay average uh modern hit counts uh is relying on critting and relying on scotty for quick crits here to make the most out of her deck first skill 20 percent attack 10 percent gauge for the entire party for three turns and hp for everyone for three turns i stand by the fact that for say she needs this 20 this cannot be th it can't be 10 Unlike uh, Daikoko Ten, who are AOE quick arts loopers with a, a eight hit quick MP, and they get ten. Um, this say needs twenty. She needs twenty per turn per turn as a quick unit. Otherwise, she's not refunding. Like, and that's just her talking as a farmer. In even challenge quest, she still needs twenty. I still think she needs like 20 because she's even more likely to not uh, kill one of the enemies and is relying on the power and mod to do like crit damage. If she does not have one of her cards, she's going to get fucked. Like just bad RNG and you're screwed. Uh, like literally all it is going to take is for you to get bricked and not get any cards for the first, like, the first, like, you get all four of your refund cards on turn three, and you only get one buster card. Good fucking luck. And that is only in challenge quest where she should, should technically uh, farm the best. Second skill, three attacks, three turns, 30% crit damage for three turns, and a 30% battery. Skill. Uh, she works better, but brief like this doesn't fix fix the refund issue. Fixes the CE CE issue, does not fix the refund issue. Third skill, 30% quick up, 20% battery. So she has a 50% battery in her own kit. And 10% 10 stars just dropped. Like, how bad are your gains if you have a 50% battery and, re like, you have a refund issue? And an Oberon setup, you have 220% battery and you're having issues getting to 300. And you also have 10 per turn. Like, how fucking awkward is your gain at this point? You have so much charge. This is 250% charge. Or 240. And you are having refund issues. I, I'm, I'm just going to double check whether she's on this list. And no, she's not. Not on this list. Not even here. Like, obviously, she can do su super scope farming. That's not going to be the question. Let's say it's not like 15% uh, debuff resistance, 10% 10, uh, 10 star weight, 10% crit damage on quick cards, and 100% charm res resistance. This does not mean she can't be charmed. It just means that uh, even like a unit needs to do like charm res down. Or it has to be like a 500% chance to charm for it to land on, say. Anything like below that is probably, it's not going to work. 
This is at least a good at a pen because you actually would bring a knight class to fight an ultra ego if you don't have a pretender, which there is only one single target pretender. So unless you want to risk it for the biscuit with a berserker, you're using say. And the crit damage isn't going to be terrible. You have as many power mods as you have would say. It's not going to be terrible, but the issue is are any of her power mods even going to fucking work on an alter ego? Are there any of them even going to work? Let's see. Let's fucking see. MP, four hit AoE with three different power mods. None of these are super effective. These are only power mods, but she gets three of them. Neutral alignment. Shadow Servant and Man Attribute. Shadow Servant, not going to come up in challenge quests. Like, almost ever. You can nick this right out. The only, like, Shadow Servants would be trash mobs. Is it going to come up? Yeah. Is it going to come up often? Nope. Man Attribute and Neutral, more likely. Neutral, are there any Alter Egos here? Yes, Bazette. Bunyan. Like, neutral isn't bad for her. It actually isn't bad for her. And not even, like, that many Lancers are neutral either. There, there's a chunk, but... Actually, there they might actually be more neutral Lancers than there are Sabres. Yeah, no, actually, I take that back. Neutral is actually a detriment since there's more saber, there's more lancer neutrals than there are sabers. At least I'm pretty sure, or they're about even. Yeah, they they look about even. Uh, but a few of the alter egos, and man attribute. I don't think we're gonna see alter egos. Oh, okay. So Okitan, Okitan is best case scenario for say. Because it hits two of her niches. Uh, so it's Okitan. Okita. Suna. Man, neutral. Like, I, like, do you see how much I have to, like, do you see how much I have to cherry pick to, like, find good cases, per se, Saber Ogiton? I, I hope you guys, like, see, like, how much I have to, like, do for this, like, not full. But, like, not, like, I have to, like, search this hard for it. Like, yes, having the wide reaching is good, but it's like, it's not like your MP damage is that high to begin with. Like, just one and you're okay. Two, you're cooking. This is never going to pop, and you're more likely hitting this. It's like the Venn diagram. You have, like, one thing in the middle and, like, a couple things in the rings. But mo like this is it's not that much. It's, it's so it's so there are so few cases I can't I couldn't justify this. And along with the refund issues, like it's there are a lot of issues using say. That she's definitely not here. She's definitely not here. I think B is honestly the fairest part for her. Like, I, I'm pretty sure in the formula, crit damage goes in the same place as power mods. I would rather take crit, like, just crit damage in general than have to worry about power mods for the MP. Yeah, I, I would have, I would take lower MP damage, but, like, fantastic fucking uh, cards than having a slightly stronger MP and just, like, potato cards. Those, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can tell how I'm ranking Takasugi after saying that. All right. 
Next up, we have Ilya. This is a modern Atalanta. Is her refund as crazy as Atalanta's? Absolutely fucking not. Which, uh, oh wait, why is, why is there no timer for my chat? Time sense we're not showing. Uh, I'm pinned. All right. There we go. Yeah. So Ilya, modern Atalanta for how she functions. She is quick farmer. Uh, unlike Atalanta, you definitely have to work a lot more to try to black rail loop. Like Atalanta at 10 hit MP is just set up better for black rail because of how overkill works. As long as she can get the early hits in overkill, all those extra hits, those like 20 plus hits of overkill are going to do a lot for her gain. Ilya having less hits is definitely going to affect the gain. But she's easier to use. She's much easier to use and will have uh, a more, a better midpoint than the massive gaps for Atalanta. Like, this is Atalanta. I can't even see, like, the high and low end because they're just not on the graph. While Ilya is, like, this. Like, her peak, her, like, her base or... How do I phrase it? Her trough, like thinking of like a wave, her trough is not as uh, low in comparison to her crest. Like you're able to see the difference while Atalanta's is just like massively depending on like how good yours is. Like the performance is going to be way more consistent with Ilya. Uh, base attack. It is high for a four star, like almost as high as Jarcher. Funny enough, like at base, Ilya's uh, base attack is almost as high as Jarcher. HP, almost the same as her attack. Like this is some berserker type shit. Fucking makes sense if you know Ilya. Uh. MP charge 0.63% and hit counts again are okay. Not super amazing. They're modern except here, but you're probably not doing an extra attack with her unless it's a mighty chain because now mighty chain actually works pretty well with Ilya. 20% quick is an issue. I think the like, I think they were way too safe on this character, uh, but it does make it. So leveling skill one is not your biggest priority. And honestly, should be the last thing because it's two percent quick. Like it, it just scale it scales very poorly. Uh like this. This should be thirty when it when they eventually buff it. Star weight of quick cards five hundred percent and one hundred percent crit crit damage regardless of card type. He is nice skill though. Thirty percent uh MP gen. One hit of invincibility uh, over the course of three turns and 20% attack for child servants. As a quick looper, this is a good skill for her. She counts as a child servant and she can be used in multi-core because of this skill. And it also does make sense for multi-core because of this. Because in normal farming, you would pop this no matter what. If you're doing multi-core, you would pop this skill on the turn you need to crit. Which, and it would be the AoE uh, Saber Wave. And third skill, 30% battery, 50% crit damage on top of it, and a 70% 70, 70 chance to recover HP, but it's super low, but it's on a five-turn cooldown. This is some wonkiness, but like at least at, like this is just a cherry on top. It ha if it happens, it happens. Like mm, This is her weakest skill. And they should buff it. Twenty percent debuff resistance, eight percent crit damage, and three gauge per turn. Make as a quick looper. This is very nice to have. 
Very, very nice to have. You need this if you want to start with a good CE like Traces, and it will help a refund as well. And Anti-Archer, because lol. Chloe. Pretty sure it's Chloe. MP, 5 hit AoE quick. Damages to all enemy and an Omni card buff that lasts one turn. Because of Yui, and I'm going to keep bringing it up, this overcharge effect went up in value. Uh, it kind of does suck because unless Ilya already has a buster buff, it means that you can't get the full benefit of, Chloe, of Yui unless you're bringing Ruler Scotty. And Ruler Scotty would not be the best buffer for Ilya because she only has one buster card. You would want Yui to go second to get mm, so that you could get the buster part but you'd also want her to go first if you want Ilya to get more card buff so like if Ilya has already has the buster buff because she she has a quick buff and she has the arts buff from Yui if she already has a buster buff you can put Yui before Ilya and you can get even more refund and damage out of this otherwise you're Probably just going to wait for next turn or something. I think because she's more consistent, she goes above Atalanta. But I'm... If I remember right, her refund isn't... It's pretty tight. It, like it is if you met like if a refund isn't there you're not looping like you're gonna be just under well atalanta you refund hit it and hitting the 50 usually is not usually an issue uh and it, like if you have quick units and you like using them you should roll ru ruler scotty she makes quick units like not slow She speed she speeds up the game and she came out at a time when Quick got buffed. So everything about Ruler Scotty like kind of was discovered like after she came out. Because people were still getting used to how mighty chains actually would work. And getting used to what servants work best, uh actual farming numbers, calcs. It it did take a bit. Uh, yeah. All right. Eight more. And here's it now. Ah, Vabanshi. All right. This is. This is one of my favorite single target quick units. If they buff her MP, I will. I promise I'm going to 120 her. I, that is a fucking promise. I will 120 Bob and she if they buff her MP. Um, yeah, this servant, they literally, they, and they literally had to buff Tristan because of Bob and she coming out. Because if she came out and Tristan did not have his card buff, no one would have ever used him again. Because Bob, like Tristan without the card buff, is just completely inferior to the servant. And she's a good girl. If her mother is around, she deserves head pats. If not, um, pray you'll live. You need, you kind of do need Morgan around to keep this one in check. Otherwise she's going to try to fuck you over. 9.4k attack, 12.1k uh, HP. She had, like, in solo shit, like, you just run her with command code. So, again, this is, this is whatever. She she is just one of those units. You'd just be running survivability shit. And my God, can she, is it easy to stay alive with her? Point uh point five eight percent gain on these hit counts. Four hits on quick, three on arts, and just the refund is just going to be there. 
it's going to be there because you're going to crit. Yeah, like this is the bias. The bias is going to come out, chat. This is this is a modern servant with like just she's a lost belt six servant. So they went all out on her and made her as good as possible without and still haven't buffed her yet. 40% quick up for three turns because 30 just isn't enough. Invo for the entire for a turn gives everyone harp of healing and does 500 damage to herself. She does not lose this dodge. She carries this over for the next turn. The invo protects the dodge. So you get a free turn and then you get a free hit next time she gets attacked. So you can like, even if you're fighting two enemies, you can tank two MPs plus on different turns. As long as they don't have invo pierce or uh, pierce evasion. Second skill, she MP seals, and then she skill seals. And then a 30% battery. If you pop this on the turn, you pop the invo. Well, hey. And especially if she's solo, this is another free fucking battery. Because she can't take damage as long as she, like, and she's going to get hit three times. Third skill, 3k heal by draining the enemy. Chance to drain 100% and a 30% battery. She has a 60% battery on her skills as a fucking four star. Like what? Quick is notorious for not having many servants with like batteries. Yeah, this one has like two of them that aren't that aren't just you have a battery. Like, again, Mellison's situation, like, this was a bloodsucker. She was always going to have, like, this was going to be there. She didn't need a battery on this one. It's just so much appreciated. It is just so much appreciated. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if the reason she has these two batteries is because she's Morgan's fucking daughter. I would, like, they made her Morgan da Morgan's daughter, so they gave her two batteries. Twenty five percent debuff resistance, because of course she needs it. Quick up ten percent, and then arts up ten percent. She has a fifty card buff for quick. <laughs> fifty card buff and a sixty battery, along with invul. Don't any don't believe anyone that says that Melison is the only one from Lost Belt Six that's overtuned. It's all of them. Every single unit that came from that Lost Belt is overtuned. Percival is the most tame one, and he's still the best AOE arts looping uh, lancer. Like, most consistent. Hey, is 60 battery not enough for you? Here's another 20. Here's another 20 on top of it. Oh, are you an archer? Here, let's fight alter egos. There's not enough. There's no pretenders in the game yet. Here, you can counter them until a single target quick comes out. Oh, wait. Your other form is a pretender. So you get class advantage against alter egos in that form. And then if she's solo, she gets this. And then mighty chains. Uh, doesn't need it. A, re <laughs> a refund gets even stupider. The literal worst part about Bob and she is the fact that she does dots. That is what will trigger most people and write her off. They get, they overtuned all this stuff just to give her dots and make people not want to use her when she has the highest dot scaling in the game at base. She this isn't doubles curse damage. She triples curse damage. She triples the curse damage on the first hit. And it lasts for five fucking turns. So even the worst aspect of her kit that is the most beamed on is still overtuned. tuned 
in any multi-core situation, like she is almost the option. You don't like there's no reason to use anyone else. She's just gonna work the best. Cause she'll also refund some of the best. Like this is like they on this calc they have her using this. Do you really like in single target farm? Do you really think she's not gonna be able to get a quick crit and refund? Like for all of these, but the Buster ones, I feel like it's scuffed. I feel like, and especially because this is like, this is not gonna help her. I feel this calc is flawed, but you can't. It, it's hard to calc card refund whether you even get it if you don't kill. Like, if you kill, you don't get card refund. So I get this, but this is super misleading for a character that can start off. Like, she can start off with Black Rail. You put Oberon in front, and then she has 100%. But you wouldn't start Oberon out like this. But you have op you don't have to pop our all her skills. Like, literally... You can start off with 20, pop one of her batteries, probably the first, probably the first one, pop all ruler Scotty buff, swap out to the other Scotty, pop her buffs, and then pop Oberon's battery. And then you have 130 in reserve. Am I glazing her? Probably. If I if someone were to glaze her, are they probably getting a fucking spike through the tongue? Yeah, probably. And probably through the penis as penis and or any genitals as well. And then she'd start laughing. No, 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 no. We're not. This is no, 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 no. This is not for coomers. This is not. This is not the coomer tier list. We're not. We're not talking about some sick new codes. That exists on the internet, probably. We're not we're not talking about new codes here. Chat, this is how this is how you know. This is how you know I'm too tired. If now I'm actually starting to talk shit. This happened with the Saber one, and now we're we're devolving to Coomer. But yeah, TLDR, she is so fucking overtuned to the point they had to buff a unit four months before she even came out. Or three months. Or two. I don't even fucking remember. I think it was two months. They had to buff a unit two months before she came out just so she wouldn't stand out that much. I truly think she is better than Tristan in almost every way. Only thing he ha really has on her is the buff strip. That's it. And, but I think Baba and she just has way more to offer than just the buff strip. Also, she doesn't have a lame fucking gimmick where if you're not paying attention that you're going to fuck up your entire run. I'm just saying. I'm just fucking saying. Not EX yet, but... I mean, she she might go into EX. Let, let's be honest. Let, let's just be honest. There's no other single target quick. She's probably going up at, in EX. Right? No. It, it, it's literally between her and Tristan. Like, Calamity Jane's not up there to be a, a DPS. All right, next, Anastasia and B. For once, she's not complaining about it's, it being too fucking hot. Because she's wearing a swimsuit and she's still going to freeze the fucking ocean. She can make the water as cold as she wants it to be. 9.5k attack. 
11.2k hp and this is the uh, this is low for a four star this is like this is average but the hp is definitely lower than it should be star weight star gen normal uh, archer numbers mp charge sitting at 0.57 and hit counts are average they're not super amazing Third skill, I mean, first skill. Ugh, yeah, I, I definitely uh, is getting up there, chat. First skill, 30% arts up and a 50% battery on a three star. I mean, four star. Yeah, I got to end this soon. Mm, boofing. On a four star, and she gets a 50% battery. Okay. Okay. One turn of invincibility. Buff removal resistance for one turn. This like this combo being a hundred percent and for a full turn. Not the right type of servant for you to get the most out of this, but you are very thankful because you you pop this, you're not taking damage. People, you can't lose the invul. They would need invul pierce. They could not eat your buffs off. And you would not want this chance space to begin with. 20 stars, it's nice. Uh, it's not needed, but it's very much appreciated as an archer. Especially because this skill has almost 100% uptime. 500% star weight for arts cards. Ignores evasion for three turns. 30% crit damage for three turns. And 20% MP damage, again, on a four-turn cooldown. If you use her with Tomomo, there is literally zero downtime. You are never not going to have this skill up. You're all, like, all the arts card, all the stars for arts cards is going to go to her cards. Always. You're always going to have uh, evasion. For certain fights, like, you actually might, like, this is unremovable dodges. Unremovable dodges for a saber and like Anastasia is just clapping them. No issues. No needing to bring Holmes or um Calamity Jane to deal with it. Especially if it's like 30 instances of chance based dodge. That has to be the most fucking frustrating thing for any min turner like you can possibly imagine. Like every t like no matter what RNG you're still like not only are they gonna have to reset for RNG whether the card even crits they're gonna have to reset RNG for whether their attacks even fucking hit and there's nothing they can do about it if it's unremovable besides like yeah ten percent crit damage ten percent star gen. 9.5% debuff resistance, 9.5% debuff success rate. Uh, miss moment. <laughs> yeah, miss moment of Anastasia. I still have not gotten spooked by Anastasia on any of my accounts. She is the one caster. Oh, no, Shahrazad too. Like, ha caster spooks don't happen for me. It's berserkers. It's berserkers for me. Uh, and, oh, and sabers. It's berserkers and sabers. Anti-caster, uh, 20 battery. It's very helpful for her to like have 70 battery as a four-star. Damage to one enemy, skill seals them, and arts res down for one turn. This is like super, super nice. If you're like, if this is just to, like soften the enemy, you get more refund afterwards for any arts cards that follow up. So especially like one arts crit, you're probably getting your MP back. More, yeah, more likely than not, as long as you can get an arts crit, you're probably getting your MP back. And slight issue with this, if you are using this with Castoria, because now the enemy isn't going to pop skills, if it's one enemy and they're just, they're just going to burn through your uh, stacks. So especially if they have AOE attacks, you might want to be careful with this because you might 
have to start popping Castorias more than you really should. I'm only bringing this up because, like, most other units that have a skill seal like this usually have, like, a taunt too, and I'm bringing up an Andromeda, but, like, usually spammable skill seal on an arts unit, like, might mess up your Castoria rotation. And it might honestly help it, because you're getting hit more, you get more refund, but it could fuck up your timing for, like, when you need to repop. Like, especially in terms of MPs. I would not put her in EX. I think there's still... There's some FB parts about her kit. And you probably would prefer Squirt Toria. Yeah, like once again, they're not they're not using black rail specifically because they don't want to rely on card refund. Like this is strictly you have enough uh refund through like just MP spam on this list. But yeah, Anastasia solid for an a single target arch uh archer. All right, Zenobia. I have used this servant at like any MP copy you can possibly fucking imagine. Uh, if you go in expecting her to loop 100%, you are going to be sorely disappointed. He is built more similar to a quick looper in that she has a gain deficiency and then they gave her the solution to it. Uh, Also, she has the same, like, she has the same um, mental issue that uh, Raiko has, where she talks about the shamelessness in Caldea while she's wearing this. Um... And she, like, also, if you look at her expression, she has that Ugh, you look at you. It's like this, this, ugh, the disgust faced. Hold up. Like, y'all, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's this one. It's this one. It's like you look at porn. Or like you look at porn, don't you? You're thinking, you're thinking something you probably shouldn't. You're try you're probably thinking something about what I'm wearing, aren't you? Uh yeah, gotta fix this. All right. Yeah, she it's like she like it's like she wears this and then she has the horny bat. And then she like she becomes friends with Raiko, and then there's a whole other issue that stems from that. Uh, and Summer Zenobia might be even might join might join the shadow government of uh, Summer facilities. Okay, but back to it. Base attack. It is high. And if you grail her, she her stats are very, very, very comparable to uh, Jarcher. But Zenobia is a four star. Jarcher is a five star. Five star should not be getting outstatted by four stars at level 90. And even like she is, it's like they made her if as a five star and then they just downgraded her with a Jar uh, Jarcher scaling. Low HP too. And she does not have like low HP memes. MP charge 0.47%. Uh, if she crits on these cards, she's going to refund a lot and she's going, it's going to fucking hurt. Like her crit damage is not to be fucking underestimated. And the only other archer that in the game that has crit ramp up like her is Takasugi. 
and unironically, he is like two archers after her. Except he's quick. He can actually make the most out of this. Zenobia sometimes has issues with crits. Uh, but hit counts look fantastic if you mighty chain it. Mighty Brave Chain, uh, you're going to get some good shit out of it. But uh, heavily reliant on crits to refund. 30% arts up, 20% gain per turn, and 10 stars per turn. When you are leveling Zenobia, this needs to be the first skill you level. Otherwise, all your refund is going to be shit. This is arts buff tied to refund. Actual refund tied to refund. You are going to be stopping short. A lot if this is not maxed out. Speaking from personal experience. One time, three turn guts, 500% star weight, and 20 stars just drop down. Also, if they were to buff Zenobia, especially this skill, reduce the cooldown and make this uh, 15. Nah, 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 they're not going to buff this skill. They're not. They're not. Mm -mm. But yeah, having a targeted like getting stars return and a star bomb, it's it's really nice on a crit servant. It's really fucking nice, especially because like in farming, you don't need to pop this turn one. You shouldn't be popping this turn one. Like if you're like, why are you uh, why are you nervous? Why are you nervous? Your guts is about to get popped when you're farming. Are you do you plan on fucking up? And if you pop this on turn one, you're definitely fucking up. Like you literally have to be counterclassing to like act for this to even matter if you pop a turn one. In which case, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you bring using her to fight Lancers? That you have to actually ha give her a guts to make sure she doesn't die. Twenty percent attack for the party and crit attack chance resistance thirty percent for three turns. Uh this is so goaded. I fucking love this shit. Mist, like, brought my attention to it, like, years ago. Um, I fucking love it when units have this. Because it stops them from fucking dying in, like, storm pods. When they have crit attack chance and you just see crit mist. Oh. Especially, like, when they have, like, goddess essence and, like, you literally cannot stick the crit, res uh, crit chance down on them. Like, King Protea. When she fucking crits, that shit hurts so fucking much. Like, King Protea, while you have, like, Vich out, like, fucking sucks. He literally just massacres your bitches, and you're just sitting there contemplating life as your fucking berserker now is struggling. Anyway, Madras is this D, 12.5%. Crit damage, 8%. And quick up, 8%. She actually, this actually matters for her because she has two quick cards. Not that good, but... Uh, uh, hey, they could be two hit. They they could have made them two hit quick cards. NP, she gets a ten. Oh, right. If you unlock mana loading, you will be able to pop one of the Castoria MPs turn one. But you have to be careful and make sure that Zenobia is actually able to refund a hundred percent. Uh, throughout all the waves, like if she's not able to. Uh, start from z like if you're starting from zero if she's not able like even one wave she, where she just stops barely short you can't pop castori mps turn one it might help the re like the reason you'd want to do it is because it would help the refund but if like it turns into an issue where you're actually you need like a battery you have to save like the third one of the 30s and that is definitely ugh, that's that's an issue if you're not like, sorry, need to refocus. Like I'm trying to think of the setup, but in most cases, like this is like this is the bias showing because like when I use Zenobia, like usually if I pop Castoria MPs turn one, like there's no refund issue. It's only like this is only going to be an issue for. If you're not fighting all sabers or you have berserkers mixed in. But even still, like some of the time you're looping above 100%. Like they're looping 90% without the 20 back. Like this is definitely insurance 
the more you up Zenobia's gain or the more extra charge you have, the less you need this. Like, this basic, it, that's just basic math. 20% attack buff, 10% uh, attack buff for one turn. This is very slight, but it turns it into 30. Nice for good numbers. Super effective damage against king enemies. Now this, like Muramasa having this, it's whatever. Because not that many Lancers have king. It's eight. Almost 15 Sabres have king. Along with all these Berserkers. Like for Zenobia, she ha like she is of the class where this matters the most. It was it was either gonna be her or no she like Saber is the one that has it the most. The next is Rider. So assa anti king riders, I mean assassins like uh, Jinke, they get the most use out of anti king. Bar none. Bar none. This is like one of the best. Like obviously anti earth, like anti attribute would have been better. You would have hit more enemies. But the, like as a saber, or as an archer, this is a good niche to have. And then she ramps up crit damage, activates first, but on an MP it doesn't fucking matter. But the space is fifty and it goes up to one hundred. I'm putting her in A plus. Uh, uh, yeah, no, 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 A plus. I think these two are very swappable, but I would concede putting one of them lower. Zenobia, I think, is just more consistent, but Jarcher damage is your issue. Yeah, no. Zenobia, refund is your issue. Jarcher damage is your issue. At MP1. You can follow up with crits. I mean, maybe your crits kill. Maybe your crits kill. Perhaps. All right, next. Tame Tomo. I have not used this man nearly as much as I should, but now that shit is squared on JP, I actually can use him in farming. I think his design is fucking sick. He is an actual fucking mech. And I'm pretty sure this is Raiko's, like, actual armor. Uh... Uh... Wait, is it? Yeah, like I I don't remember where I read it, but I could have sworn that for fate this was supposed to be Raiko's armor, but by the time it was like finished, like it was like the end of the uh, Hie and Kyo era. But his design is just fucking sick. Like and and he's like this different. Like yeah, it's the color scheme, but like. It it is just like a a shader thing for some of this, but he looks significantly different with each ascension than like other units. Like literally, case in point, is there that much of a difference? One and two, not much of a difference. It's like it really will be playing. Where's Waldo? Oh, she has another chain there. You're shiny. 
here you see like his armor like takes different shapes. He's holding the bow in a different position. It feels like they put in more effort with this character. Twelve point four K attack, thirteen point three K HP, MP charge point five six percent. He is Buster though, so don't worry too much about it. It's more mighty chain utility, and like you will credit on these because he's an archer. The counts look modern. Uh, you're not gonna be hitting the quick card too much because again, Archer, he's not gonna gen that many stars. It's pretty much only for like mighty chain utility or getting a brave chain out. First skill, Buster up three attacks, three turns, and 30% crit damage. This is slightly annoying, but at the very least, if you're farming, you can double stack this. Like it it could have been this or they could have made it a one turn of mana burst. With like I will take my W's where I can get them. I will take the W's where I can get them. Second skill. Guts, one time three turns. When the guts is activated, he fully cleanses his debuffs and he gets MP damage of 20%. Along with it being a 30% battery. You like this is useless in farming, but like when if this procs in a challenge quest, whew, when a guts proc procs, it's usually the time you do need a cleanse because a lot of the times you usually die because of like debuffs, like you get like a shitload of defense down and you just get one shot. Third skill, if, ignore evasion for five turns on a seven turn cooldown. Self regeneration buff increases the MP damage one time every five turns for f uh, and this lasts for five turns. So very much like uh, Sugitani, you don't want if you want the most damage, you don't pop the MP every single turn. And again, he's Buster, so you prob probably isn't going to be popping MP every turn. Really depends on how much he's getting hit. Debuff resistance 15%, crit damage 8%. Anti Berserker, nice needs to have. And MP ignores invincibility, ignores defense. Buster up on water side 20%. And super effective damage against lawful. Unlike, say, because niches actually would commonly come into play. However, he is actually harder to use with than, say. Because someone that is MP spam and not trying to do crit damage is not going to have a good time. He does have a lot of the same issues where the, getting all the stars to align is going to be an issue. And I do think he does need like an MP upgrade at like already. But it's almost been two years for him. That, that's the thing. All of his comp, almost all of his competition. No, all of his competition. Yeah, no, all of his competition has gotten an MP upgrade. Yeah, no, no, no. He needs, he actually does need an MP buff because every single other AoE buster MP user, all of them have buffed MPs but him. But goddamn, does this not look good for M like when all the stars align? Does that not fucking look good? That is single target damage. Granted, you're almost never going to hit this. You're almost never going to hit this. But a couple of these are probably sitting around like here. You hit a couple of them, you're probably sitting around here, and then that is comparable to his competition. So this is, this is a case where, like, he came into a niche that was already established, 
and he's he was gonna have to wait for an MP upgrade. Because of that, he's B. He's functional and everything. He has like good shit. Like every time he MPs, he's gonna have invul invul pierce and defense pierce. But the use the ease of use for the user is not gonna be there. And he also already has like so many buffs in his skills. He can't like he has to get an MP upgrade. It can't like it a skill buff isn't gonna be enough for him. Right. Uh yeah, I made errors. I forgot to mark people down, but it's it's fine. All right, we have four more: Takasugi, Durga, UDK, Bargus, and Ptolemaeus. Let's talk about Takasugi. This guy, for a lot of people, is very underwhelming. I think the guy was sick in his own event. He pretty much stole the show, and like was the most honest bad guy I think I've ever seen. Like, he straight, like, Moriarty kind of will skirt around the truth that he'll pretend to be your ally. Takasugi just, like, straight up told you, I'm going to betray you eventually. But right now, I'm going to help you. Like, it's, it, for me, it's kind of the same energy as Alistair from Has Been Hotel. Like, you know the guy is not a good guy. He has his good points, but the guy is not, he's not a good guy. He can do good things. He can help people, but he's not a good person down to his core. Takasugi will take advantage of every opportunity to just shame, to get ahead. But he'll be honest about it. So he gets respect. And then he has drip. The lighting works well for him. The lighting works well for him. Not the biggest fan of this, but I do like the more samurai-esque. Just like... uh. It's hard to describe it, like, just here, but, like, I'm pretty sure, like, in-game, the, just the material is just floating around. That just looks cool. Heavy charge, 0.57%. And hit counts across the board are fantastic. All above average except extra, but he he's a mighty chainer. He's a mighty chain spammer. First skill, 20% art, uh, quick and buster. Overcharges the party one time, three turns. This, this should be this should be 30s. Like I know his MP compensates slightly, but this still I still think these should be 30s. Second skill, targeted uh cooldown reduction along with 50% crit damage. He can use, just use this on himself. But he could also be sub DPS for multi-core. Guts, one time, three turns, 30% battery, and a 30% attack buff for himself. 12% debuff resistance, 8% crit damage, 6% arts, and 6 more percent crit damage. Definitely going to want this at 20%, and anti-ruler don't level this. You much more would go for this, because he is a mighty chain spammer and crit user. You would be going for extra attacks a lot more than other units. MP has no uh, normal effect, but the OC, uh, it, it's there. Omnicar buff like Ilya, and thirty percent crit damage. While the and while the car buffs do not ramp up, crit damage definitely does. And for a quick unit to actually have crit ramp up is nice 
He doesn't have to, and it's at 30% because he doesn't need to hit, uh, he doesn't need like 100% every MP. He's going to, he'd hit the crit cap pretty easily. Kind of does encourage mixing and matching Scotties because if you load up on one Scotty, you, not for him. Actually, no, there is, there is a chance if you're, Due to overcharge, there's a chance you actually might hit the crit cap. It's not likely, but there is a ch depending on who you who's buffing him, you actually might hit the crit cap. Uh, ch -ch -ch. yep, Omni card buff, so Yui works well with him. Uh, especially because his like Yui can always go first for him because he has this Buster buff here. Uh, he does. She does not need to wait for uh, Takasuki to first MP to, uh, for him to get the Omni Car buff because she gives the arts. So yeah, and especially for like Yui setups, I think hitting the crit cap actually is very feasible in some of his teams. And yeah, like. His kit is generic as shit. I'm not going to cap. He does not have anything crazy, but sometimes that is what you need. So like it's there is there wasn't an AoE quick servant before him. Not a five star. And like the gap between them is like I mean, yeah, th sorry, let me rephrase that. Say, there was Say, but Say was more a crit unit than she was a farmer. There was no AoE quick uh, farming archer. But the every other category was full of monsters, like the Buster ones and the Arts one. Normally, since there's no more quick, this would be where I do cheerless adjustments and start bumping people around. But Takasugi for this list is not going into EX as a quick archer. It's not that I'm leaving it open. It's that Takasugi, I don't think... If I was to put Takasugi in EX, it he'd be too easily compared. Like it, it feels like he got the slot literally to like as a token. Like he's the only AoE quick, so obviously he's gonna go in EX. That's not how I wanted this to go. Like comparatively, Gilgamesh to Takasugi. Gilgamesh stomps him into the dirt. It it just it's just how it how it is. Takasugi getting like one good buff would put him in EX, but as he is right now, I would not move him up. I'm going to hold off on Bob and Sheev because it's almost a similar situation, but it's different. So three servants and then I'm going to do final adjustments. All right, Durga or Kali. This is one of my favorite. She, Kali, not Durga, Kali has one of my favorite MPs in the entire fucking game. I love the imagery and I like it, like, I would say more than Kama's MP. As much as I like the aesthetic for Kama's MP. This one, the dance that ends the world. And it's just a bloody, like, it's just a bloody chainsaw of destruction. Like, Kali in, like, a lot of other medium is, like, one of the stronger deities for Hindu mythology. And, like, the, ah. Uh, it's like people talking about, like, bring up Gosh's back. It's like people bringing up Ifrit. 
like the name Ifrit just has like prestige to it. But does Durga slash Kali live up to that hype? Well, at least aesthetically she does. Aesthetically she does. Base attack is, I believe, the highest out of all archers in the entire game. 12.8k. HP, it's not even the lowest. 13.2k. But this is definitely the lowest MP gain for archers. I mean, archers that are farmers. This is abysmal. But as we've seen with uh, Akaru, and obviously Durga, because I have used her in like videos, uh, as long as you have a stupid amount of hits on your MP, like say eight, uh, having low gain, it doesn't matter that much if you're hitting overkill. Units like Emiya and Caster Gilgamesh, they have super high hits, but because their base damage is so low, a lot of those hits are not in overkill. Kali kind of doesn't have that much of an issue. There's still some issue with refund. But as long as you're getting overkill, the, the issue is negligible at best. But she still doesn't do nearly as much damage as she should, according to Plushy. It counts awesome across the board. Again, like nothing... The the only thing average is our extra attack. Everything else is below ab above average. And even her quick cards are actually gonna gen some stars at like at this point. First skill, 50% battery and one time three turn overcharge for the party. For her, like this is definitely turn three damage. If if at all possible. Stay this for the third turn. Like, literally use up every other battery but this because this is also tied to her damage. Second skill. And if you're using her in Castoria comps, make sure you pop this first. Otherwise, you're not going to have invul for the next turns. Three attacks, three turns. Omnicar buff of only 20%, but it's tied to, like, an invul like this. I get it. Again, this is Yui uh, Shotsetsu. Synergy. Really funny how like the last five archers have all worked with Yui pretty well. I'm I'm just saying like I'll last one, one, two, three, three, and eh, nah, it's not no, I'm boofing. Everything's starting to blur together. Oh god, it's almost four o'clock too. Yeah, I gotta finish this. But yeah, having this on a skill, good for Yui. Uh, Yui can go first, and that also means more overcharge. Oh, yeah, and also for Kali specifically, like, Yui actually is one of her best supports because she can be used in a full arts. Yui can now be used in a full arts team. Like, when a quick unit has this, it's good because all you need is one ruler, Scotty. When an art servant has the Omni... It means you can use Yui with the double Castoria. So the double pop for Yui is significantly more possible than with running on a Scotty setup. Just because of how many uh, AoE batteries are being thrown around. Yeah. Third skill. 30% MP damage. And you change... All card types to arts for one turn, a la um, Saber. Saber had the same thing with Buster. And if you are slightly lacking, like this, I don't. This changes the quote M Tash. This kind of changes everything for your team comps, because you could just use this to help secure arts chains to make it easier to pop MPs. Like, say you have, um, like, Castoria. She's 20 away. You need the MP next turn. Um, like, for the attack buff, you just change the card type, and now you have your MP for next turn to get even more overcharge. 
along with Invul Pierce. Like this, the skill, if possible, you'd want to pop this turn too, but you kind of can hold off on it for when you actually need this part. Like, yeah, it might, this not having this might screw you for overcharge, but honest, like, if you're running Black Rail, like, you don't need that much M more MP damage. You Like, you would be going for, like, getting other sources of damage than just MP damage. Because, like, getting a Castoria MP is not just attack buff, it's also going to be overcharge. And her damn overcharge... Uh, Really picks up the pace. Laundry list lists the passives. 20% debuff resistance, quick up 10%, crit damage 6%, debuff resistance 25.5%, and arts up 10%, crit damage up 10%. So 44%, 44 42.5% debuff resistance. I mean, this is Sakura slash run face. Makes sense. Uh, and 16% crit damage in kit while she does not have other card buffs and 10% card buffs, which is why these are 20, not 30 because she has the other 10 in her passives. Get this to get better farming and multi-core anti-berserker because of co fucking course she would need this. Of course, of fucking course, she'd want more berserker damage. Of course, she'd want to hit overkill quicker. But Jarcher has it too, so it's not unique to them. Uh, extra attack. I'm not gonna lie, like this is your refund from extra attack is gonna come from you getting overkill, not from like these stats, because these are like some of the worst, like. If this was lower hits on the extra attack, it would be the worst extra attack out of archers because our base stats are just so piss poor. Uh, it is like literally only saved by this base attack being as high as it is. MP, eight hit AOE arts with sky attribute power mod. Damage to all enemies, reduces enemies defenses by 20% after damage and then super effective damage against Demonic. There is some overlap here. There's... It's not that much. But Demonic as a niche for trash mobs is very common. This is like most of the trash mobs in the fucking game. A hundred and seventy one different enemies. A hundred and seventy one fucking different enemies. While like not even that many servants. Sky attribute power mod for the servants. I'm trying to just like uh it's Tomoe here. No, Tomoe is Earth. Tomoe is Earth. It's similar to the Say Shonagon thing, except Say's mods like only work for servants. This is trash mobs too, so refund is going to be better. Refund is actually gonna be affected. And there's also an attributes, unlike alignments, actually do apply. Now, let me bring up say, because I, I, I don't want to misquote this. Because I'm pretty sure her power mod is ser man attribute servants. No, okay, so man attribute is not servants. Which, it, it is good, but demonic, I think, is a better farming thing than at, uh, attribute. Than than that attribute. Yeah, so Kali Thurga has every single buff type except attack. And Castoria is can give you a shitload of attack without even trying.
Now, her one weakness is her face guard damage is horrendous. Or not her face guard damage. Her face guard performance is horrendous. If you are caught, caught slacking and she and you do not have the MP, this is not going to be fun. This is not going to be fun to deal with. But saying like saying a farmer is bad because they have bad face car damage is a non-statement. If they're never going to need to use their cards, why does it matter? And she literally and one of her skills literally makes it so she can farm better by like changing card type to get uh chains easier. Yeah, I'm I'm just going to put her up there. I think she go I think she belongs up there. I do I do stand by the fact that the higher like if she's grailed she performs better but these don't act as much as it's good that she has them it is the say issue where they don't align as much as they should. Like there is not much overlap between sky attribute and demonic. Demonic is usually tied to earth attribute, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, hang on. I'm pretty sure like demonic is much more an earth attribute thing. But sky Yeah. Yeah. So the only reason she's not like definitively EX is because there is a mismatch between her power mod and her super effective. But she has, again, every kind of buff type so that everything you do to buff her is going to see, like, an increase in performance no matter what. Everything is going to multiply into everything. And it kind of is helpful that she doesn't have crit damage because that would have taken away from stuff. And if you really do need crit damage, you can use Popus Johanna. I think, though, like for crit damage, you're better off just doing multi core and just bringing a single target to do it instead. Because again, arts, like you can just like load up Castoria and shit. All right, two more. UDK Bargus. And oh my god. Like, first off, god fucking damn. This woman is fucking caked up. These are shorts. This is a skirt. And it looks more like underwear on it. It could literally, her ass is just two toned that it looks like she's gonna break it by kneeing someone in the face. Like, and not even because her ass is fat, is her muscle, her leg muscles are so fucking massive. Oh mm, fucking god, I love Bargus. Bias again, chat for design. I like, I can't. I'll coom over this. Abs are showing, thigh muscles are showing. Looks like she's about to punch the shit out of you. Yeah. Coomer in business. All right. And also, she has a fucking maid outfit. The gap, the gap moe for this is. Ugh. Oof. All right. Base attack. Is low, 8.8k. Slight issue here, but eh. HP, lower to compensate, but I'm pretty sure she also has healing. 4.1% MP charge. 
is low for an AoE, but she's not just an AoE. And hit counts are great for hits here and here. Although for four hit arts, this is low. Like, this should be closer to seven. Yeah, no, I feel like this should be closer to seven. So, gimped here, but not by that much. All right, good thing to note. Okay, so, first skill. 30% attack, 50% crit damage for three turns. And for most cases, that's the end of the skill. But, oh no, other part. Unlike her uh, saber self, survival of the feet fittest, this is weakling pr protection. Every time she normal attack, uh, every time she normal attacks, she's going to heal the party. Not nearly as good as Saber Form that has buff removal along with that higher healing and defense down. This is a straight downgrade from normal Bargus. But I mean, like, if you're running with lower star servants, this is going to save you. In addition, if while on the field, there is a three star, two star, one star, or zero star, aka Anger Minu. Anyone lower than uh, a four star, she gets a 20% attack buff and 10 stars per turn. I am honestly all for this because it ain't like you're rewarded for not using double castoria, but at the same time, like you're telling people they have to use like Shufu, Paracelsus, Asclepius, not the best thing. Uh, especially because I think when this when she came out, I was already done with Shufu, so I didn't really get to use this. It was like Asclepius, and Asclepius is good, but he's not what Vargas needs to loop. And even if the units are grailed, uh, say you're, for me, it would be... Like, say you grailed your Shufu to, like, 120 as a solo server, because she actually can do it. She has, like, her kit will allow her to do it. She will still count for it, even if her frame isn't uh, silver. She still counts as a, lo a low star. And even four-star mash that is considered a four-star can trigger buffs. Second skill, 30% battery. Invo for everyone in the party but herself. Heals the party for everyone. Heals everyone in the party but herself. And everyone's skill cooldown goes down but herself. Selfless works for um, Tonal Echo. Work, and especially, especially works for Summer Bob and She. Like, I have seen like the double Bob and she and like this character against a saber boss and you just use double Bob and she like you're not dying. You're really not going to die. Like you have such. You'll you'll be healing for like 10,000 a turn for everyone in the party and have all max stars like. You can do some funny shit with this skill. But. I'm not ranking her based on the memes of this skill. It's still a 30 battery and it's cooldown reduction for the party. If you're able to incorporate it, especially with Tomomo, cool. If not, it's whatever. Third skill, 30% MP damage. Gives herself the super large trait. And you have the choice to swap her from AoE to single target. UD UDK Vargas at MP1. Her AoE damage, not that good. Even with the Union Knights, not that good. Uh, single target, on the other hand, uh, that's a different story. She is like almost at the top. If you start with a low star, she's pretty much at the top. And all her buffs are three turns. There's nothing one turn. Or hit-based. 
Like her, like looking at Vargas as an AOE, he isn't that impressive. But looking at her as a single target, it gets a lot better, especially because you can swap. It is unfortunate that the swap is tied to MP damage, so you do have to make the choice. Like it might if uh impact refund. But it also does mean for a 331, you can or a 311, you can ha like you can do it single core. You can buff her single core and still do single target damage. So I like it because like you don't like it stops you from having to do multi core if you if you're gonna ha if it's the best option. Like say like super high HP turn two that Buster farming does not ramp up fast enough for. Passives, 15% debuff resistance, 6% buster up, 4% crit damage, and 5% gauge while I'm burning, and immunity to burning and uh, spread of fire. This is rarely ever going to come up. Like, this is even more negligible than water side. But, I mean, it's, it's cool. And it's nice to have. It's better to have something and like just have it in case it actually comes up than not have it anti-ruler again this is useless don't ever upgrade anti-ruler on someone that is just gonna do less damage to rulers like cool you i mean you could do a little more damage but are, are you using up mana loading or extra attack for slightly more damage against class you're not effective against that you wouldn't normally be doing damage to Anyway, the only thing that changes, oh, also, it, like, it even says it, like, in-game that switching to single target does more. And so it is a stronger thing. They're both anti-armies, and it goes from B plus to A. Oh, wait, no. Isn't the plus, uh, it doubles the rank? It's so, like B plus in, most, in a lot of cases is better than A. I fucking forget. Uh, I fuck, yeah, I fucking forget how uh, the pluses and minus work in Fate. It's not like uh, English lettering. It, it is a different system. Uh, but yeah, damage to one enemy. Removes their offensive buffs. If they have burn or spread fire, you cleanse it off them. But you're using a fucking... You're literally spraying them with a giant fucking water gun. Like, Do you expect people to still be on fire when hitting... But getting hit by a burst of water literally the size of a skyscraper in volume. I didn't think so. She ups are up, arts up 20% uh, for one turn. So even in her farming, she has a 50% mana burst. Uh, wait. No, does she not have a card buff? Oh. I just, ah, uh, yeah. No, she doesn't have a card buff. Oof. That, that actually explain, explains a lot. Yeah, no, that 100% explains why her damage is lower. She... All right. Uh, Bias is mm, no. If okay, so she would have gone an extremely niche if he was like okay as a single target, but she's not just okay. She's literally at almost the top of single target. Now I know here it's not gonna show well. She's gonna be like at the bottom. And I'm not going to contest that. Like her not like trying to get her to loop over and over. Uh, it, it's not going to be pretty for single target. Single target does not have enough hits for full refund. 
It's, she just is not built for that. So. If there was a B plus, unironically, I would put her in B plus because she can go up. It depends on the situation. But I, I don't want to have too many. I don't want to have like a plus for every single tier. I want to keep keep this as compact as possible. And also we have another unit that swaps uh, in a similar kind of similar way to finish out this tier list. So yeah, B. Because Dolomias kinda Dolomias kinda does what Vargas wants to do, but just does it better. Yeah, no, like everything Vargas does, like Dolomias kinda does uh a little better. So let us finish this out. And luckily, I did not miss too many units. So when I actually go back and edit this, uh, it should not take fucking forever. I should not be spending four hours doing the timestamps. All right. Ptolemyus. You get two things out of this. You get a Shiro face and you get an old man. There is a very, very wide range of people that would appreciate that. And Muramasa is kind of both. So this is another servant where you get both the best of both wor worlds. You get a Shiro face and you get an old man. I know Miss really enjoys his old men servants. 12.5k uh, 12, yeah, 12 attack, almost flat, 16 off. And almost 14k HP. Star White Sargent actually higher than usually. Like, is this actually nine? Because, like, I know one percent isn't that big a deal, but like, this is literally the only archer that has nine percent. Everyone else is like seven. Is like gravitates to eight. This is like. On a bell curve, like, so, like, all the other units are on the actual bell. He's, like, Ptolemyus is, like, to the right of it. Like, he's high, like, significant, like, the difference is significant enough to at least notice it. And also, like, high star weight here. Higher than normal, at least. Heavy charge, 0.43. And average head counts across the board. First skill, 20% attack for the party, 1k heal every turn, and 15 stars per turn. Second skill, party arts buff, 20%, buster buff up, 20%, crit attack chance resistance, 20%, and a 50% battery. And third skill, an MP swapper. He is an MP swapper. So, if you start off in Ascension 1 and you pop skill 3, you will get a 30% battery and jump to Ascension 3. Thus, if you have mana loading, he will have a 100% battery along with 30% MP damage. If you are in Ascension 3, and you pop skill three, you will swap to uh, Ascension one and get 30% MP gen, 50% crit damage, and 500% 500, 500 star weight and 20 stars. The reason being is that this is an arts farmer and this is a single target DPS. Single target crit DPS, I should say. And like, actually, I'm just like I'm just saying like Moriarty is not a crit DPS. So technically he is the only single target uh DPS like Buster DPS on here. Like as a five star like I Mor Moriarty I feel more is uh it's be and it's because Moriarty only has one Buster card. He has the triple arts, that's why. 
like his crit potential isn't as high. Well, Ptolemyus is uh, double arts, double buster, so he definitely can do the buster brave chain. And an arts, uh, arts brave chain. Wait, isn't this... Okay, whoa, whoa wait a second. Saintcraft data preservation. If I'm not mistaken, isn't this... Doesn't this passive mean that servants remember uh, previous summonings? When that's not like, because I think Hephaestion has something similar, but that also has to do with the event. If you did, and if you didn't play Case Files rerun, uh, it did clarify stuff with Hephaestion, uh, Faker. 17.5% debuff resistance, 10% crit damage, 11% arts up, and buff removal resistance 20%. This isn't going to save your buffs often. If it does, you're happy, but you're not, you cannot bank on this. You literally cannot bank on this. Otherwise, you're going to be resetting a lot. Unlock mana loading to unlock full potential. Uh, Anti-archer just because they're in the way. Extra attack for a crit, de uh, crit form. NP, the buster form. Stage one, single target buster. Five hit single target. Yeah, five hit single target buster. Ignores defense. And don't you have Invul Pierce too? No, no Invul Pierce. Oh, well. that uh, defense Pierce still is nice, and it lasts for one turn. It's not just the MP. It, this is last for one turn. And okay, so that actually is something I do need to point out. Most of the deep defense Pierces you see on servants is tied to their MP. It goes away after the MP, so you still have to deal with defense spears afterwards. This is rare, but it's not something to go over the moon about. Like, there are CEs that can give you defense spears. There are other ways to get defense spears like this. It's just something I want to point out because it is a little special. Uh, but yeah, defense down after damage and MP damage for one turn. No ramp up. Arts ignores evasion. It's still AOE five hits, or it's five hits AOE instead, and still MP damage ramp up, or not ramp up, uh, MP damage for a turn. So this one... I think I have to leave in a very similar situation to Takasugi. I do not think he is EX, and be I'm also going to move Moriarty down because of it. He is good, but as an AoE, he's not beating Kali. As a single target, he's good, but he's not doing anything like super amazing to the point that he stands out outside of being able to swap like the swap is the mechanic him being a single target is not it doesn't stand out so much that i can just like put, plop him in the ex like sabers sabers have a lot of dud servants but the good sabers fucking stand out and are good regardless of them being sabers these aoe art like these archers a lot of them are good for being archers, but if they, like if they were in other classes, they wouldn't get the their rankings. They would go down. So, final adjustment times. Bob and she, I see going up into A. Same with Squirtoria, and then Gilgamesh. Everyone else is pretty much staying where they are. Like, and I know Moriarty was like the sneak. I just moved him. But like I said, he is like one MP buff away. And then when you look at Ptolemyus, like as a single target, he just functions better. Like Moriarty functions better as a sub DPS. 
for multi-core, not as a single target DPS. Technically, Ptolemy, uh, Ptolemy would function better as a but like as a crit DPS, like with him swapping than Moriarty who doesn't swap. Yeah. So in general, this is how I have the rankings done. Uh, these numbers can sometimes go even more up or down based on MP copies due to servants hitting certain breakpoints with damage. Like a servant, like if a servant hits a very specific looping breakpoint just because they got the extra damage at MP3 than MP2. Um the refund numbers would go up like more. It wouldn't be like, cause like if you don't hit overkill more, your refund numbers don't change whether you're MP two or five, but if you actually are able to hit overkill differently based on copies, and this is including like black rail, like the value of the servant goes up. A lot of these archers are, that way at mp1 they're going to be suffering at higher copies a lot of their refund issues aren't going to be there and for a lot of these units their damage will be an issue even with black row all right uh this tier list uh Let's lock it in. Can you not? Can you not? I would like to smoke soon, please. Uh, All right, in before one of these archers gets buffed. I don't think any of the archers are in do not use at all. I don't think any of them are that bad. But Elena is not that far off from being there and i just want to see how i had these units ranked before yeah damn As you can see, there is definitely some moving around. There is definitely some moving around, and it looks more, it looks like I know what I'm talking about a little bit more. <laughs> 